Buddy Holly really got it rolling. But nothing gets a West Texan excited like college football. Tonight, 35,000 have come to Jones Stadium to watch their beloved Texas Tech Red Raiders take on the Houston Cougars. It's John Jenkins and his 18th rank Houston Cougars. It's Spike Dykes that is fired up Texas Tech Red Raiders. And it's the most feared offense in college football, the Houston run and shoot. And it's the Texas Tech team whose hallmark is a punishing defense. It's the Southwest Conference shootout next. is Jones Stadium in Lubbock, Texas, on campus at Texas Tech, and where we have a crowd of more than 35,000 to see the Red Raiders take on the high-flying Houston Cougars. Good evening, everybody. I'm Mike Patrick, and welcome to our special Thursday night edition of College Football. When Andre Ware left Houston with the Heisman Trophy, there was a sigh of relief from defensive coordinators all over the Southwest Conference. Maybe they shouldn't have. It's my pleasure to be working with Steve Davis, and Steve, even without Andre Ware, the run and shoot is alive and well. Well, be prepared to be impressed tonight because this offense really creates opportunities for great numbers from the quarterback and the receivers, and they've got an outstanding quarterback in Dave Klinger. But what's funny about it is last week he has the best start of any quarterback in the Southwest Conference, and nobody really knows about it. He produced unbelievable numbers that were unequaled by Ware uh, when he first played his first game. But what is unique about the offense is his job and task, Mike, is really to identify the coverages mm -hmm. and then to execute the offense. They throw to four different uh, receivers, one running back. It's an outstanding offense, and it's really produced some big, big numbers. Well, Texas Tech knows its offense has to take time off the clock and put points on the board. His special teams have to play much better than they did a week ago against Ohio State, but all the pressure really falls on that defense. I think that Texas Tech really matches up nicely against uh, uh, Houston tonight because they've got eight returning starters on defense. Seven are from the linebackers and the secondary positions, and I think that gives them a real opportunity to really put pressure. Teams that have played well against Houston have been able to take away the big play, get them into third down and long situations, and then to be able to create real turnovers from the secondary. I think Texas Tech has the ability to do that night. It's going to be a lot of fun. And there is the mass rider ready to lead out the Red Raiders of Texas Tech. They are 0-1 after losing in Columbus, Ohio, 17-0 to Ohio State, a game they had a chance to win. And here comes Houston, 1-0. They won their opener against the University of Nevada at Las Vegas with that run and shoot, 37-9. We'll be back for the kickoff from Lubbock, Houston against Texas Tech in a moment. Eclipse was always a rare phenomenon, seen only once or twice in a lifetime. But ever since car and driver named the Mitsubishi Eclipse GS Turbo to its annual 10 best list, and ever since Automobile Magazine put the all-wheel drive Eclipse GSX on its 1990 all-star list, you see eclipses all the time. Mitsubishi. The word is getting around. Dickies take you back through the ages to show you a few of the famous people who wore Dickies pants. Your dad, General George Armstrong Custer, Abraham Lincoln, Blackbeard the Pirate, William Shakespeare, Robin Hood, and Tiller the Hun. You too can wear these famous pants by Dickies, available every day at famous low prices. Dickies, famous since 1922. Attila the Hun, made with Porsche polyester by Fighter Industries. I'm James Buster Douglas. I'm the heavyweight champion of the world because I knocked out Mike Tyson. Some people said it was luck. Oh, what an uppercut from Douglas. Tyson's in deep trouble. The left cross, it puts him on the canvas. He may not get up. It 
wasn't, love. It's my job to hit people. I hit them harder than they hit me. It takes a lot of hard work and a lot of pain. But I'm not afraid of it. I'm not afraid of anything. You saw what I did to Mike Tyson. Vander Holyfield thinks he can do the same to me. He thinks he's the next champion. He's right about one thing. He's next. Douglas versus Holyfield for the heavyweight title. Live from the Mirage. It's the moment of truth. And the truth is gonna hurt. Call now for tickets. We're back at Jones Stadium in Lubbock, Texas, and standing by for Houston and Texas Tech. And it's a beautiful night here in Lubbock. Very low humidity, only 34%. Temperature has dropped below 90. We have Kevin Kiley working the sidelines for us tonight. Let's get out of him and find out a little bit more about tonight's game. Kevin. Thank you, Mike. It was 1979, and Emery Ballard was the coach at Mississippi State. He had two West Texans as assistant coaches. One was John Jenkins, and the other was Spike Dykes. They became fast friends, and as coaches will do, they spent many a night at the Pancake House, where they diagram plays until 2 a.m. in the morning, until finally, Spike Dykes, Spike Dykes turned to Jenks, and he said, Jenks, I've had enough of the college game. I'm headed back to West Texas, and I'm gonna coach high school football. Well, Jenks was all alone. He remembered a book he once read about the run and shoot, written by a high school coach called Tiger Ellison. Jenks began to fiddle with it. And what resulted was the most devastating offense in college football history. The Houston Cougar run and shoot. They've broken over 200 records since 1987. These two guys are fast friends. They have great programs, and it's a beautiful night for a ball game. Houston Cougars and the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Mike? All right, Kevin, thank you very much. Houston will receive as Texas Tech won the toss and elected to defer to the second half. And junior Lynn Elliott out of Waco, Texas, will kick it away. So Texas Tech is giving Houston the football to start the ball game, and they will rely on their defense, and that is Tracy Good, standing at the one, waiting to receive. He's flanked by Kenny Perry and Chuck Weatherspoon. Good, nine yards deep after a big kick by Lynn Elliott, and they will go from the 20. And now for tonight's diehard starting lineup. For Houston, David Klingler, the second start of his career, racked up great numbers a week ago. Another record setter, Chuck Weatherspoon, is the single setback. Williams and Brown are the wide receivers. The inside receivers, Cody Smith and Tracy Good. Greg Jones, out of Dickinson, Texas, is the center. The guards, Bowman and Geisler. And the tackles, Truett and Jessup for the Houston Cougars. Keep an eye on Texas Tech, how they play defense, how many guys they drop back into coverage, and see what their scheme is on defense. Klingler with that little half roll, and they have stopped the play. And Houston will have to start first and, fifth, uh, first and 15 at its own 15. John Jenkins on the sideline. Jenkins succeeds Jack Pardee and only the seventh coach in 44 years at Houston. He signals in all the offensive plays and the run and shoot as much as anyone is his brainchild. He has certainly taken it further than anyone else. And they have racked up some incredible numbers. You will notice that Houston does not huddle. They call all the plays at the line of scrimmage. And movement along the line, and it looked like the nose man, Greg Burden, number 98, jumped. Let's see if he was drawn off. Offside! Defense! Still first down. All right, we've had a kickoff in two plays, and there's still 15 minutes to go on the first quarter clock. And it's first and 10 again. Klingler calling the signals as a backup to Andre Ware a year ago. He was number two in the Southwest Conference in quarterback rating. Throwing on the run and throwing incomplete. He was intended for Marcus Grant, but Tony Brown on the coverage. Let's take a look at that Texas Tech defense, a defense that really impresses Steve. 
Greg Burden is the nose man. Phelps the defensive tackle, and they shift that line. The defensive ends, Washington and Lucio out of Dallas. The middle linebacker, Matt Wingo. Good set of linebackers. Weatherspoon and Rowe on the outside. In the secondary, outstanding. Ferguson and Walker are the corners. Dubisky and Saul by the safety. Saul may turn out to be a great player. Weatherspoon on the first carry. Last week, he averaged over 12 yards a carry. This time, he's got 17. The beauty of the run and shoot, it is not just a passing offense. Look at the numbers on Weatherspoon. 9.6 yards a carry last year. Broke the NCAA record, and he's ahead of that pace now. One of the concerns with defense is that you've got to be able to always be aware of the running attack. They only carry the run the ball 10, 12 times a game, but don't let that slip up on you. Klingler on the soft roll, going deep. Cooper knocked away again by Tony Brown out of Giddings, Texas. And the thing about that is the crowd is really pumped up about that defensive play, but they have to do that all night long. Texas Tech is going to blitz this time, so it puts everyone in a man situation, put pressure on the quarterback. Tony Brown does a great job of following all the way down the field on the coverage. The quarterback's rolling away from pressure. But Tony Brown is right there making the defense of the play on the pass. Klingler has missed his first two at second and ten. Three-man rush this time. Klingler in trouble, got away. Whistle still had not blown, and he throws complete. Got it to Craig Alexander. He was in the grasp of Charles Rowe, but Rowe could not bring him down. And unlike pro football, until you're down, you're not down. Boy, the biggest mistake and what the coaches have concentrated all week long, secondary backs don't ever give up playing pass defense. He looks like he's wrapped up. Sammy Walker, the right corner, is in coverage. He kind of slacks off and lets the receiver. Those receivers are great about constant moving and getting away. Rowe should have made the tackle, but the defensive back should have stayed put in coverage. And it shows you the athletic ability of Klingler. It's a first down at the 46-yard line. Wants to go deep again, has Brown open at the five, touchdown! And just that quick, this powerful run and shoot offense lights up the scoreboard in only a minute, three seconds of the first quarter. Scary, isn't it? Roman Anderson will come on for the point after. Out of the hold of Tracy Good, a wide receiver. And the point after is good, and just like that, the Cougars hit Verlin Brown, who is their leading returning receiver with Manny Hazard out. Texas Tech this time, they're going to go with a very small rush, only three-man rush. Look at the bottom of your screen. Verlin Brown, number four, will break down the sideline on Tony Brown. He just runs by him. Brown's got excellent speed, 10-2 in the 100 meter. He just runs by him. There's nothing. It wasn't the offense. It was just athlete on athlete. Here's the throw again. Watch him. He just breaks on. He's got to make a play. That Tony Brown, the defensive back, has got to follow him through. They were also asking Saul. They had six defensive backs in the, in the play that time. Still couldn't defend him. Brown broke his ankle in the second game a year ago. He was tied for the lead in the nation and receptions when he was injured. So exactly what Spike Dykes did not want to happen has happened as Houston strikes early on the bomb. And John Jenkins is a believer that this is an offense that if it's executed properly cannot be stopped by anybody. Blackshear and Allen are deep to receive Anderson's kick. to the 13-yard line. 
let's take a look at that Texas Tech offense. They struggled a little bit last week against Ohio State. Jamie Gill real banged up. He is the quarterback. Anthony Lynn and Lewis Sheffield, a couple of quality running backs. Blackshear and Mannyweather are his starting wide receivers. Carr, the tight end. He'll be shuttling plays with home. Elam is the center. The guards, Duvall and Mancillus. And the tackles, Dubose and Biggers. Let's see what Texas Tech can do to answer. Gill, play action on first down. Deep over the middle. He's got Mannyweather brought down by Preston Bailey, a gain of 25. And you don't have to run the run and shoot to throw the football. So many times in the first play, you expect a running play. Gill's the one that makes the play. Look at the fantastic fake. A little bit of a pause and then pulls the ball up and he's looking for Mannyweather number two right across the middle. The fake was hit. The linebackers are frozen. There's an open area. There was a deep receiver that cleared the area for him. Now they'll go to the ground and give it to Sheffield, the fullback who crosses the 39 to about the 40-yard line. Sheffield out of San Antonio. Eric Blount, number 42, makes the tackle. He's from Memphis, Tennessee. One of the things, Mike, that Texas Tech has to do, controlling the clock is one thing. A lot of teams have done that, but it's the ball. You've got to create tempo, your own tempo, and you've got to put points on the board or the game will get away from you quickly. Gill back to throw, sideline. Well covered and knocked away from the intended receiver, Blackshear, and that was Zach Chapman, the corner, who was with him stride for stride. That Houston defense has Weatherspoon and Mateka at the defensive tackle. Johnson and Youngblood are the defensive ends. McCoy, the middle linebacker, will play a couple of guys there tonight. The outside back is Blount Burnett. Tyrone Davis and Chapman who made the last play at the corner. And Bailey and Jerry Parks, the transfer from Oklahoma, are the safeties. Third down, eight yards to go. Texas Tech opening possession. Here comes the rush. They pick it up pretty well, and Gill floats it over the middle, intended for Blackshear. The safeties crossed. Jerry Parks gave him a shot after Tyrone Davis had him in coverage. So Texas Tech will have to kick it away on fourth and eight. Punting was a nightmare for the Red Raiders a week ago. This is Mike DeLagerheim. He averaged 39 yards a kick, but hit some line drives. And the return game and the coverage game for Texas Tech, which has always been outstanding under Spike Dykes, was awful a week ago. Weatherspoon across the 25 to the 29-yard line and pretty decent field position after a 41-yard punt and a 10-yard return. We'll be back in a moment. Our recipe for the beer with the taste for food start with the finest all-natural ingredients combined with a century-old brewing tradition. Chill and serve. Yeah, for great taste, it's a natural, natural light from Anheuser-Busch. I'd like you to come back and testify. She's his only chance to find a killer. I don't know what you're talking about. He's her only chance to stay alive. We can't get off the train. You know we're going to find her. It's just a matter of time. You're the one who put me in danger. Gene Hackman, Ann Archer. Narrow Margin, rated R. Starts Friday, September 21st at a theater near you. Dan Larson knows a secluded course where the holes are challenging, but the fees aren't. Now, where do you suppose he'd rent a car? Budgets, where every rental passes 25 quality checks and price is not a handicap. Bob Nickel knows a little French cafe where the food is magnifique, but the bill isn't. Now, where do you suppose he'd rent a car? Budget, where he finds the most luxury Lincolns, over 3,500 locations worldwide, and very tasteful prices. The smart money is on budget. 
ESPN College Football Special, Houston versus Texas Tech, is brought to you by Natural Light from Anheuser-Busch. Where there's good food and good times, it's only natural. 12 minutes, 39 seconds to go. First quarter of play. Houston already leading at 7-0. They have thrown for 80 yards coming on the first possession of the ball game. Klingler hitting Berlin Brown for a long touchdown. And Klingler is back to throw on first down under pressure. He'll be sacked this time, and a flag goes down, too. Fred Petty, number 77. The transfer from Garden City, Kansas Community College got in and made the sack for a loss of seven. We'll check the flag. There is nobody but freshmen behind David Klingler, one including his younger brother, and the offensive line says, we know we can't let him get hit. We know we can't let him get hurt. That time they failed. They just accomplished something that was not accomplished last week. They sacked the quarterback. He was not sacked all last week in the UNLV game. Second and 17. They're back to their own 23, but they don't care where they throw it from. Little half roll to the right, which is the standard feature in this offense. Grant makes the grab. His fifth of the year, Dubisky, the safety, came up and made the tackle. It's a gain of 13. Houston calls the play at the line of scrimmage, and what basically ha happens, they're laying out a number and a color, and the, basically the number is a live number that calls in the play, that recognizes the line that says this is a live play. There he is calling it, so they don't need a huddle. They get it called, and they throw it outside. There were five men underneath in the short zones, and the receiver knows to break away from the coverage, and that's exactly what they did. That's the luxury of that offense. Break where they aren't. Third and five, they have three wide receivers to the near side this time. Klingler under some pressure. He'll try to run for it and gets out of bounds. Appears to be well shy of the first down and good defensive pressure by Texas Tech. Mike, Texas Tech creates tremendous positives if they can rush just four men and force the quarterback out of his tempo and away from the pocket, away from his protection, and get him running out of bounds where he can't throw the ball. And that's a tremendous luxury of confidence for Texas Tech that they really questioned whether they could do coming into the game. Lucio and Rowe were putting on the pressure. Rowe came up limping. And this is Charles Langston, the punt to Tracy Saul. He led the Southwest Conference a year ago in punt return. Langston did not have a good game last week. Not a good kick here, but gets the big bounce. Huge bounce down the sideline, down at the five-yard line. And the Houston Cougars got a break on that as Langston got a punt off, got a huge bounce, and it goes 59 yards. ESPN's College Football Saturday continues this weekend. We'll have two games for you. 12.30, the Ivy League. Penn goes against Dartmouth. And then at 7.30, 19th ranked Michigan State, the Spartans travel to the Dome to take on Syracuse. That is a 7.30 start. They will mark this ball at the nine-yard line, saying it was touched there first by the Red Raiders, and that's a good call. Well, Steve, they came out on their first possession and threw on first down. What would you do here? Don't turn the ball over. No, yeah. You've got to get Houston long distances to score. Lynn gets his number called for the first time. He'll get about three out to the 12-yard line. Parks came up from the safety spot to get in on the tackle. Lynn is a confident young man. One of the things that Texas Tech wanted to do was run away from the weak linebacker, Reggie Burnett, number 88. There he takes on the tight end block. He is a ferocious tackler, a versatile player for Houston, and vital to the success of their defense. He just is an impact player. His experience, ability to blitz, all those things makes him a threat. So Texas Tech respects him so much, they want to find him and run away from him. He was a tight end until they put the run and shoot in. Tight ends are non-existent in this offense. But he went to running back. Flag is down on the pitch to Lynn, and Lynn has the first down, tentatively at least, as he gets up to the 25-yard line. Tyrone Davis makes the tackle. Lynn is trying to come in in the footsteps of James Gray, who gained over 1,500 yards last year. Well, the play will stand as it will go against Houston, but Gray gained 1,500 yards last year. Lynn says he'll break that mark. 
this is a new wrinkle, Mike, in Texas Tech's offense. They didn't run the option last week. They're trying to take advantage of what we call a soft corner where the cornerbacks are dropped off. He's got a lead blocker right out in front of him. Good play for Texas Tech. Makes Houston think a little bit more rather than dropping back and passing that inside running game. They've got to concentrate on the outside. Spread that defense out. Spotted at the 25, first and 10. Second possession for the Red Raiders. On the toss, this is Lynn cutting it back. Gets four to the 29. Eric Blount, number 42, who's the leading tackler on this team, coming off 13 stops a week ago. Texas, te excuse me, Mike. Texas Tech's running what we call an offset eye. That means the fullback is out of position of what you see in the traditional eye formation. They put him there because they want to create better blocking angles for the fullback and also create opportunities where the fullback can be a pass receiver. So when that fullback goes in motion or wherever he goes, oftentimes on running and pass plays, that gives you an indication of where Texas Tech is headed. Second and six. Nice play action by Gill, still under pressure, dumps it to Sheffield. Got a block downfield, 45-yard line. That was either a very well-designed play or a nice bit of improvisation on the part of Jamie Gill and his fullback, Lewis Sheffield. Texas Tech is an excellent screen team. Two reasons. Jamie Gill makes a great job faking. Watch the play of the fullback Sheffield. Acts like a blockman, just kind of meanders out to catch the ball. Jamie Gill did a great job of looking away from the defense and giving them an opportunity to set up the screen play. Great execution by Texas Tech. Gill has hit two out of four for 41 yards in the first quarter. Lynn on the toss, cuts it back again, has a very upright running style. Gets to the 46 this time, Blount makes the tackle again. And when you run like that, most of the time you're a long strider and can take a lot of hits. Well, you never want to take hits, I promise you that, but he does take hits because of his running style. The real key, I think, in this ball game for Texas Tech also, Jamie Gill and Anthony Lynn last week against Ohio State took a little bit too much pressure on themselves. And you can tell right now that they're really backing away and playing their game. That's real important to Texas Tech's success. Six play this drive so far, and that is important as far as taking time off this clock. Sheffield again out of the backfield. Blount chases him and makes the tackle along with Zach Chapman. Mike Patrick and Steve Davis with you from Lubbock, Texas. And right now, Steve, it looks like they have a very good offensive game plan. Well, what happens against Houston, sometimes you let them set the tempo. And one of the things that Texas Tech has to do is create their own tempo. And I think Jamie Gill, the quarterback, is doing just an excellent job with his play selection, throwing a good ball. That time they were wanting to go a little deeper in the secondary, but he had to drop it off short side. So he's making good decisions early in the game. Shane Sears, number 40, checks in at fullback. Lynn gets the call and reaches the 35. Give him two on the carry. First time Texas Tech has invaded Houston territory. Jason Youngblood and Reggie Burnett, number 88, were on the stop. One of the plays, Mike, that worked successfully against Ohio State was a throwback play. Jamie Gill is doing a great job faking the ball to the eye back. And watch him a little bit later. They'll have a chance to put it on his hip, drop back, and throw it to the opposite side. They set it up well against Ohio State, and they're doing the same right now with Houston. And this is an offense that had to be almost totally rebuilt from that 9-3 and three team a year ago. Nice throw and a good grab by Manny Weather as Gill got it to him at the 30-yard line. It'll be about two and a half yards shy of a first down. The safety, Preston Bailey, made the tackle, but a good throw by Jamie Gill. Of the three quarterbacks of Texas Tech, Jamie Gill is the experienced one, the one that's more capable of doing a lot of things. Stands tall, under pressure, great job by the offensive line, throws a strike. Watch Manny Weather, number two, breaks down right in front of the defender, makes the catch. Third and two, Lynn cuts it back, got to the 29. He's still a yard and a half shy 
of a first down and decision time early for Spike Dykes. Ryan McCoy, the middle linebacker, and Linton Weatherspoon got there. You really hate to turn it over to the offense. You just have to maintain ball control and be productive. You just don't want to turn it over. Lloyd Hill, number 18, a wide receiver, checks in along with Anthony Stinnett, number 11. And on fourth, in about a yard and a half, they will go for it. 5.59 to go, first quarter. The 10th play of this drive, which is taking five minutes off the clock. Diving, tailback Lynn, I don't think he made it. Great job at the center of that defense. McCoy, Blount, and Johnny Johnson, number 51, got there, and it's not even close enough to measure. Let's see, go right up the middle. Biggers gets stood up, number 68, by Youngblood, number 98. That had to be a critical block. And CS was another, and Ellum another in the middle, and they were just not able to move them forward. Like the decision on the part of Spike Dykes, though. You have to figure in this game, field goals probably aren't going to do you a whole lot of good unless you get 10, 15 of them. There is a timeout on the field with 5.50 to go. First period, it's 7-0 Houston. and take over on downs at their own 29. Flag down. Klingler floats it for Smith, and it's too far. Covered very well by Dubisky. Check the penalty flag for you. Motion on the offense. Let's get down to the sideline and Kevin Kyler. Kevin. All right, thanks, Mike. After that last defensive uh, series that the Texas Tech had, which was a good one, both Marcus Washington and Charles Rowe came off the field. Both had right ankle or foot injuries. Now, Charles Rowe was the conference defensive player of the week. Watch him. Number 38 had a lot of trouble putting weight on that foot. All right, Kevin, thanks very much. And you saw what he did last week against Ohio State. A brilliant game with 16 tackles. That was a game the Texas Tech had a real shot to win. Mistakes hurt them against the heavily favored Buckeyes. More than anything else, you hate to see them lose their leadership on defense when they really need it right now. Klingler with time. Almost intercepted. Quentin Rhodes out of Dallas, Texas, had his hands on it, probably should have made the catch. Coverage did a great job of staying with the receiver. Another thing that's happening, you know that Houston's changing their theory a little bit because they're keeping their full, their one back to help out on the quarterback. So the pressure is working. Great job by the defense to stay with them. They had two men out there, made him throw into coverage. Rhodes got over there to help out and got both hands on the ball. Now it's second and 15. Weatherspoon on the toss, tripped at the line of scrimmage, lost the ball, and they rule it down. Weatherspoon tripped up by Marcus Washington as he tried to turn the corner. And Washington, the six foot, 220 pound junior, does what nobody else has been able to do so far this year, and that's get Weatherspoon before he was 10, 12 yards downfield. Third and 17. Pressure on Klingler, and they've got him from behind, and it's Mike Lissio. The 240-pound sophomore came clean from the blind side, and Klingler couldn't get out of there. Mike Lithio, 91, beat Leroy Truitt, number 79, and make the play. That's only a three-man rush against Houston, and that ability to create those opportunities is really what stops or slows down Houston. Langston to punt to Saul. Bad snap, but fielded it well. Low line drive kick. Saul from his 46. Oh. Got back to the 49, and he was buried at that point. Big tackle by Stephen Hines on special teams.
Your North Texas Chevy GO dealers have asked Ed and I to invite y'all to week as it did in 16 a year ago. That is Charles Rowe and bad news for Texas Tech. He has a sprained right arch and he is out for the ball game. We can show you the last play of the series of what how it may have happened or at least it indicated that he had an injury. Watch him right here. It's his right foot, right ankle. He pulls up lame and he doesn't play anymore. Big loss for the Red Raider defense. Right now they have the ball at the 49 yard line. Hill looks, Lynn, to the 40, to the 39. It's a first down for Texas Tech. Blount and Davis on the stop again. They have been very active so far tonight. Lynn also a pretty good receiver coming out of the backfield. Interesting about Gill, he had gained 15 pounds in the spring. It was up around 225 and a little bit too heavy. And the... Uh, his offensive line mates put a lineman's number on his locker and he got the hint. Flag is down. That ball won't start with an offense for Well, at least they didn't put ultra slim fast in there. <laughs> a subtle hint. Subtle. Yeah, exactly. To make it first and 15. The tight end shuttling the play. Steve Carr, 92, comes in. Hume, 49, goes out for the Red Raiders. Lynn, as Houston's defense closes very, very well, and Blount made the huge hit. I mean, he just leveled Anthony Lynn. Blount is listed at 215, but boy, he looks bigger than that. He is an extremely tough, physical player. The coaches say that he's, he's best at handling the inside run, and he has uh, really helped that the others, McCoy and Burnett, in terms of that linebacker position. Second down, now 11. Gill with good protection, has time, throws again, complete to Lynn coming out of the backfield. He gets down to the Houston 32. That'll be about three yards shy of a first down. Blount on coverage again. And just for sheer numbers, Texas Tech has done a good job so far. There's only 3.43 to go in the first quarter. They're only down 7-0, and they're driving. That time, Houston went with what we call the half the fields and all zone, five under zones in the short route. And what Texas Tech is doing, they're attacking those zones short, just a little bit in front of the coverage. And so that's why they're able to have success right now. Third and three. Gill doesn't like what he sees as he comes to the line of scrimmage and has to burn a first half timeout. There's the offensive coordinator right there, Dick Wynn. Oh, and their action. Mike Patrick, Steve Davis, and Kevin Kiley with you from Lubbock, Texas. Glad you could join us on a Thursday night. And there's the story. Houston striking with a bomb, leading 7-0. The Texas Tech, the second time they have driven into Houston territory, they face a third and three here. Looked like contact as the nose man, Linton Weatherspoon, came across. And credit that to the quarterback, Jamie Gill, with a little snap of the head. Weatherspoon, a true freshman out of La Habra, California. Watch Jamie Gill really emphasize the count to draw Houston over. I mean, he's almost yelling at him to come on and get him. That was one of the problems last week for Houston. They had 13 penalties and 127 yards, and that hurt them in the ball game. But, of course, they didn't. They weren't challenged in terms of the scoreboard. They've been flagged three times here in the first period. Gill in trouble, and it was Burnett coming on the blitz. Outstanding defensive player. The outside linebacker gets him for a loss of nine. And Gill, who took such a pounding last week against Ohio State, is down, and you can see him holding on to his left foot. 
in this attack, the fullback has to protect the quarterback in this type of coverage. And watch Burnett, 88, just blow by both the fullback and the tailback and get to Jamie Gill, the quarterback, and that's where the injury resulted. Burnett is such an instinctive player, made a beeline, did not take any wasted steps. Here comes Spike Dykes to check on his starting quarterback. He told us that uh, Gill had taken such a pounding. He is his starting quarterback, but he expected Jason Rattan and Robert Hall both to play some tonight in various circumstances, and now it looks like uh, at least one of them, there's Rattan, ready on the sideline. It looks like he's going to get his chance with Gill down. I wonder the way Jamie Gill has played in the first quarter if that would have made that they would have gone to their multiple quarterback yeah. set because he's played very well. He's the experienced quarterback and that's not what they want to see. They want to have the luxury of using quarterbacks to create momentum not one that goes down that you've got to have in the game. He's able to put some weight on it so that's a good sign for Texas Tech. They've already lost their leader on defense Charles Rowe. It's his left ankle. You see Burnett roll over the ankle right there. Great shot. His foot is is planted and there he is right now Burnett rolls over it and, and the ankle just couldn't go anywhere else Jason Rattan comes on he's a good runner a decent passer on second and 18 tough spot to come in play action late give to Lynn and Lynn gets down to the 31 yard line once again Eric Blount who's been extremely active in the first quarter makes the tackle Anthony Lynn is just a great practice player. I mean, he really puts the effort into it, bounces it outside. The play was designed to go inside. He had to break it outside and just keeps his balance, shucks one tackle, and goes into the secondary. Rattan was one of the players honored before the game here tonight for his outstanding academic performance. He has a 4-0 average. And there are the numbers on Rattan from a year ago. Big rush thrown across the middle. Should have been caught by Manny Weather. Zach Chapman was with him, but it was on target, and Manny Weather couldn't hold it. Rattan really steps up. Manny Weather is really open. You've got to catch this ball. He breaks inside. It's just the post route. Hits him the perfect place right where he has to catch it. Not away from his body. Right there close. Drops a great opportunity. This will be a 47-yard field goal attempt by Lynn Elliott. Very inconsistent a year ago. He's got the distance. And Elliott puts Texas Tech on the board. That would have been good from another five yards. He crushed it with a slight wind in his back. Steve, I thought that possession was very important for Texas Tech. It was the second time they had driven deep in Houston territory. They needed to get something on the board out of that. Well, their first possession, they started at the 13-yard line, then the 5. They started at the 49. They have to get something at that point. And to lose their quarterback and to have a couple of busted plays, they really did take advantage of it. And what is impressive is the Rattan came in and really stood up and made good calls and good throws. And they'd have had a first down inside the 20 if Manny Weather could have held on to that pass. Well, I felt coming into the ball game that the Texas Tech defense, if they could establish something early in the ball game, which they have, that confidence factor, they're not intimidated by the run and shoot. I mean, they've got some guns of their own. Tracy Good is the center deep man. He's standing in the end zone. Remember the first kickoff, Elliott put it nine yards deep. It's even better this time and hit the goal post. So Elliott just crushed it and made sure nobody would have a chance to bring it out. It's quite a weapon when you can do that. 21-yard drive, eight plays, two minutes and seven seconds off the clock. Of course, every tick keeps the ball away from Houston, and Elliott converted from 47 yards out. Klingler so far, three out of six, 75 yards out of the run and shoot. But he's only getting warmed up.
delay. This is Weatherspoon following his blockers. Gets out to the 29-yard line. Jamie Gill is being taken to the locker room for x-rays on his ankle. There is Gill getting the treatment on the sideline. They will take him into the locker room. They have x-ray facilities here, and they will check it out. And you can see he's able to put weight on it, so that's a good sign for the Red Raiders. But he's not ready to go to the dance yet. Second and two. Every down is a throwing down. Good makes the grab, driven out of bounds. He got to the 37. Good caught nine balls a week ago. John Jenkins, the coach of Houston, run and shoot. I mean, he really considers himself the author of the offense. He mm -hmm. really is. And what the offense is designed to do is really take advantage of those four receivers and really put you on different levels. And they just feel like they've got an answer for every question you can throw out. They think it's different than Detroit or anybody else's version of that single back offense. And they are. They're taking it to a different level. Their quarterbacks are the key to the offense. And those receivers have the ability to make the option call just like you run the option ball. Klingler fakes one way, comes back to the other, and short hops it to Grant. One of the interesting stories about this offense, as we mentioned earlier, Tiger Ellison, a high school coach in Ohio, really came up with a concept. But guess why you never heard of Tiger Ellison after that? Woody Hayes hired him. And uh, the run-and-shoot concept is not going to fly with Woody Hayes. <laughs> no. I think Coach Hayes uh, didn't really care about being exciting. I think he said to hell with that. He, he wanted his own style. He took the first half of it, the run part. <laughs> Weatherspoon cuts it outside. What a stiff arm. Runs over another tackler, crosses midfield, 45, still on his feet to the 40-yard line. He buried Ronald Ferguson and then killed Dubisky in the process. What a load. Don't think that Weatherspoon is not an outstanding talent at running back. He's the only running back they have, but he is a bowling ball type runner, good speed, able to deliver a good hit, physical. I think his size is a factor. Those short strides, I think, make him a little bit better of a runner. Look at him. That's a stiff arm. Oh. His arm's just long enough to get that kind of leverage. And then he just ran right up Dubisky's chest. Moving on the line, a flag is down. Klingler floats it as a man wide open. Touchdown, Sherman Smith. Ferguson beaten badly. We will check the penalty. It's against Texas Tech, and the touchdown will stand. What weapons this ball club has. And that penalty was called after the touchdown, and I think it had to do with their celebration. We have to do something about that rule. That's a little harsh, 15 yards. But that offense is a little harsh, too. Anderson on for the point after. And puts it through. So just when Texas Tech looked like it had momentum going on its side after the field goal cut it to seven and three, Houston explodes. What's the inside receiver? They make their own calls. They make several different reads. It's pre-snap. He just blows right by. Nobody picks him up, and he blows right by the defender that's got him. The whole offensive concept is, is the receiver comes out there, and he decides where that defensive back is, and he makes his route based on the defensive coverage. And Ferguson was just not even there. That was an easy throw right across the middle, deep. One of the very difficult things about defensing the run and shoot is that you need to use so many second-line defensive backs in order to cover it. These are guys you normally wouldn't be playing a lot. Well, that's right. They have to go to a six and seven defensive backs. Sometimes they have to take their more physical defensive backs that are used in the most games for the running time game. So you are getting people. That's part of the concept, getting mismatches, getting the great speed of their receivers against maybe a little bit less speed and certainly in practice it's almost impossible to create the looks the timing the throwing ability and the speed in combination and that was the most difficult task for texas back this week and a short week of preparation houston has had two 80 yard drives one took a minute three the other took a minute and 11 and now 
Houston will have to kick off from its own 20-yard line because of that unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. And this will give the Red Raiders a break. Blackshear and Allen. And now they move it up to the 25. And it was a 10-yard rather than a 15-yard penalty. So Blackshear and Allen will go back to their own 15. And Anderson out of Sugarland, Texas, will again be kicking into the wind. Good kick this time. Over the head of the receivers, but it bounces at the one, and Blackshear has to go from there. Had a seam for a moment, got it back just across the 20-yard line. Let's go back to the sideline and Kevin Kiley. Kevin. Oh, no, Mikey, this isn't the sideline. Up, up on the roof. And if mascots were touchdowns, nobody would ever beat Texas Tech. We've seen the masked rider. There's Raider Red. And this fellow right here is the roof raider. Uh, I'm not supposed to tell his name's Mitch Bradshaw. I'm not supposed to say. Mitch, what is your function? It's just to get the crowd involved with the offense, defense, waving the flags. All right, well, get them get him involved now. You need them. All go. right, okay, back to you from the roof, Mike. Okay, Kevin. I'm sure you'll be back at the sidelines sooner or later. Just don't take that one big step to get there. Gill has been taped up. They did not even bother with the x-rays. They said he's fine. And is back in at quarterback. And they'll need him. Pretty good mobility as he scrambles out of the pocket. Has plenty of time. Sidearms it and incomplete to Mannyweather. Now that's Rattan. Rattan 0 for 2. His first pass thrown a lot better than that one. Texas Tech has to establish ball control right now and keep the ball away from Houston. Don't let them get back in the ball game. Get a first and 10, gain some confidence, but do not give the ball back to Houston. Second and 10. Texas Tech down 14-3 at home. Rutan throws this one off balance and way too high for Manny Weather out of bounds. Coverage by Chapman. And mascots all over the place here tonight. Rutan, a very smart quarterback, understands the offense very well, and a good athlete. He has missed all three attempts tonight, now faced with third and ten from his own 20. And Houston, remember, last year did such a brilliant job in creating turnovers with its defense. And Texas Tech can't afford them. Rutan with a screen. No dice. Burnett is all over Shane Sears. Burnett has already shown us in the first quarter he's got great athletic ability. He showed you there he wasn't going to be fooled either. The difference between Gill and Rattan, the looking off. Burnett wasn't fooled at all. The quarterback's play was not quite as good as what we saw with Gill. He didn't look him away. Burnett just made a beeline right for the, the pass in the area that was thrown. Weatherspoon back for the punt. Takes a Houston bounce and down at midfield. Kick of only 36 yards, but it was better than that. Might have gotten another 20 out of the roll. Tough break for DeLagerheim. And one second left in the period. There's Burnett on the sideline. He's had a big first quarter. He and Blount have been outstanding at linebacker. Spot the ball exactly at midfield. The one thing that Texas Tech did not want to have is for Houston to get in their tempo. Generally, teams have 10 to 12 possessions. They're on a track right now towards 20 possessions, which is the kind of tempo that they want. They, this is their fifth possession, and they're still in first quarter. Klingler already five out of nine, 124 yards, two touchdowns, and he's going for more on the last play intended for Graham, and he almost caught up to a ball that looked to be badly overthrown. Tony Brown was on coverage, but Grant made the dive, and Klingler just snaps the fingers as if to say, we'll get that one later. End of the quarter, 14-3 Houston. Think about it. There are thousands of buildings.
College football on a Thursday night from Lubbock, Texas. And it's Houston 14, Texas Tech 3 after one quarter. And Houston has the football back. And settled in for a long one. That took 53 minutes to play the first 15. Klingler delayed a weather spoon. Boy, this guy gets up ahead of steam. He might as well forget it. He's down to the 43-yard line, and they're saying the ball is down as Texas Tech came out with it. Check some baseball scores for you. Houston and Cincinnati in the second. St. Louis beating Montreal. That's in the fifth. There's the big one. The Mets have come back to take the lead over the Pirates. Top of the fifth. Chicago leading Boston. The Red Sox trying to hang on. Toronto deadlocked with Baltimore. Klingler throwing back across the green and behind Sherman Smith. Really the first bad throw he has made. I've been very impressed in that first period with Klingler. Not only the way he throws the ball, but the decisions he's made. He makes good decisions. He's been with the system, and that gives him the advantages. Uh, Coach Jenkins has coached Doug Flutie and Jim Kelly and Andre Ware, but Klingler's the one. Klingler is the one that has the, the talent in terms of experience with the offense, and he's more capable of taking it and expanding what it can do. Langston to punt to Saul. Line drive intended for the corner, but makes the end zone. NFL game day comes your way this Sunday. It starts at noon Eastern. Chris Berman, Tom Jackson, Pete Axtelm, and Joe Theismann provide the most comprehensive pregame show in pro football. Then at 7 o'clock, everybody comes back for prime time. You see the highlights of all the day's games with some shockers last week. And I'm sure there will be some more coming your way this Sunday, and ESPN will be there to bring it all to you. Fans trying to get Texas Tech pumped up again, and Jamie Gill now is back in the ballgame. While Houston had it, he was on the sideline testing that ankle. We'll see how he moves. Sears and Lynn are the running backs behind him. And Lynn will get the call. Gets five, gets ten, out to the 30, and should have a first down. Johnny Johnson almost got him with the line of scrimmage. Trey Hooper chased him down to make the tackle. He just stepped over Johnson. Watch the athletic ability of Anthony Lynn to be able to step over a little bit of the hurdle right there, clutter, get away from your feet, and then break it in and find the first and ten. Good physical, stand-up, but tough runner for Texas Tech. He had two starts a year ago. Both of them had over 100 yards. Shears, the fullback, he'll get five to the 35-yard line. Blount makes the tackle again, number 42. Regardless of what coaches tell you, I really believe when you've got a starter, a quarterback that's got experience, and you say you've got three quarterbacks that are very capable of playing, the guys that are in the offensive line down in the trenches making the blocks, they like to have that confident quarterback that says, hey, guys, let's make something happen, let's go. So that's why it's important for Jamie Gill to be in the ballgame. Second and five. Lynn on the toss, has some room, cut it back, and then ran into his own man. He had Jason Duvall, number 66, the only returning starter along the offensive line out there. And it looks like if he had continued on the outside, he had some good running room, but cut it back instead. And now it's third and less than two. Lynn, 11 carries, 47 yards. He was a workhorse a week ago at 27 for 85 at Ohio State. They have not made a third down yet in this ballgame. Motion, people jumping offside. Here comes Lynn, and he's buried. Burnett got there first, and then thrown to the turf by James Bevel, number 77. We'll check the penalty. Looked like Burnett may have jumped offside. See if he was drawn. If so, it would be the first mistake Burnett has made tonight. He's also played middle linebacker. They like him on the outside of this defense because of his speed. Offside on the So 
So they call offsetting penalties and will bring up third and two. Gill is really accentuating the cadence and trying to draw off Houston in terms of the way he handles the, the snap count. That time a lot of movement there. I think the penalty really was on Anthony Lynn, at least for the Texas Tech side, because once there was motion, Burnett came across, then Anthony Lynn was in movement. Third and two. They'll go with Lynn. Takes a big shot that gets across the 40 and has the first down. Hit very, very hard by Blount, but he couldn't prevent him from getting the necessary yardage. Blount and Lynn, a couple of pretty sturdy-looking football players. Blount must have 10 tackles so far. Well, that adds to the theory that Texas Tech wanted to go to the other side away from Reggie Burnett because that's where Eric Blount is. <laughs> Blount's no day at the beach. <laughs> Nice play action by Gill, throwing wide open. Caught by Lloyd Hill, the freshman from Odessa, Texas, the high school All-American, a gain of 29. Nice play action fake. Gill throws everybody. Houston is going in a zone set. They're very, very soft in terms of their coverage. Lloyd Hill is a, has tremendous potential as a receiver, but not a lot of experience. Gill stands straight and tall, makes a good throw. Look at the cushion. Those defensive backs, that's Parks that's got to get out there. They're playing halves, and he was not able to make the play over there. They're playing a lot of cushion in the secondary. Third time in the half, Texas Tech has been deep in Houston territory. This is Marshall who checks in a tailback and he drives forward for about three. Loose football. Looks like Texas Tech got it back and they may have whistled it dead. Marshall out of Grand Prairie, Texas has sprinters speed. He was the state 5A sprint champion in Texas. He'll come out of the ball game. We've talked a lot about Reggie Burnett. He's on the left side watching Chase the ball. Great defenses have that kind of fanatical effort and great individual play. That's those guys that swarm the ball. Boy, you just hate to play against those kind of guys if you're on the offensive team. Gain of four, and Lynn is right back in there as Gill comes out throwing. Complete, he's got another first down, and once again, he hit Lloyd Hill. Zach Chapman made the tackle. Nice offensive game plan by Texas Tech. They have really mixed it up. Spot the ball at the 19 of Houston. 10.25 to go first half. 14-3 Cougars. Sheffield, the fullback, tough sledding up the middle. McCoy, the middle linebacker, number 44, the first man to get a hand on it. Johnny Johnson came over to help out. Sheffield can play either running back, probably because of his 4-7 time, a little bit better suited to fullback. And they lost Anthony McDowell a couple of weeks ago to uh, scholastic ineligibility. So Sheffield became the starter immediately. Second and eight. Gill on the roll and under some pressure. 15, 10, out of bounds. The ankle must be fine. Jamie Gill does just a great job of getting away from pressure. Good block on the outside to break down the perimeter uh, coverage. A good, good second effort by everybody in terms of the line. And then Jamie breaks away, takes a safe route, and gets out of bounds. The junior out of Hurst, Texas. Ball spotted at the seven. First and goal. This drive is going 74 yards. And taking more than five minutes off the clock. Three backs in there now, and this is Lynn on the sweep. Lynn to the two. Tracy Cooper, number 94, got out there along with Preston Bailey to make the tackle. Dykes, who got his chance here in Texas Tech. He certainly made the most of it. Nine and three a year ago. 
He says the schedule he's got, including Ohio State and Miami, is an athletic director's, not a coach's schedule this year. Lynn. Touchdown. They trail 14-9. Gill dumps it. The conversion is good, and Sheffield took it out of the backfield. On the touchdown, two things happen. Watch 49 make a good block inside, and then the fullback's block to lead blocks and a power sweep on the left side. And the two-point conversion, Gill hits Sheffield in a nice effort to get it into the end zone in front of Blount. Recently, Four Wheel and Off-Road Magazine took this year's 4x4 of the year winner and all the past winners and conducted a head-to-head -head showdown to determine the best of the best. So who won? There are a lot of 4x4s out there, but there's only one Jeep. Now get 0% financing or $1,000 cash back on new Jeep Cherokees. Uh, I like your shoes, Mr. Madden. Yeah, I knew you'd like them. Forshine Comfort Tech. There's only one Jeep. And by Forshine Comfort Tech, total comfort for a total refund at participating retailers. When you look back on this game when it's over, if it was close at the end, remember that two-point conversion because Spike Dykes, I think, believes he needs all the points he's going to get. Now, you get 8.56 to go in the second quarter, and he's going for a two-point conversion. Well, I think that's the attitude you have to take. This game, historically, they've played them as close as anyone in the conference. They've played them very well, and so I think you're right, Mike. They've got to feel like get everything you can get every time you get a chance to get it. Elliott now kicks off into the wind. Good, the center deep man. This one is taken by Kenny Perry. Broke the tackle, got to the 20, no further. Very impressive drive by Texas Tech. They went from their own 20 to score in 5 minutes and 21 seconds, 11 plays. And that's the key against a team like Houston who can strike so quickly is to take a lot of time off the clock and make it pay off at the end. A lot of people have been able to control the clock against them, yes. 40, 45 minutes worth, but they haven't been able to be productive on the score. And that gives credit to the Houston defense because great teams that throw the ball, you know, they have to be able to play defense, and that's what the difference is of a lot of schools that are committed to one phase of the game or the other because they don't play good defense to complement their offense. Mm -hmm. And we have another Texas Tech injury. We'll get word on that as soon as we can. The storyline from West Texas. Houston, two scoring drives, 80 yards apiece, took just over a minute for each one. Klingler already has 124 yards passing. And you can see how Tech has dominated the number of plays in possession, but they trail 14 to 11. And Gill, after going out with an ankle injury, has had a fine ball game in his own right as the Texas Tech quarterback. Mascots, everywhere you look, there's a mascot. And I'll tell you one thing, when that horse takes off after a touchdown, it's every man for himself on the sideline. I watch people scatter on that one. Kevin Colley was warned <laughs> specifically, stay away from the horse. <laughs> Good advice. Now this guy is the one that I think has got the toughest job. He does a push-up after every touchdown, for every point, does push-ups. Now, when you're scoring the kind of points, I mean, this guy is an unbelievable athlete. 
against SMU last year when they got 90, 99 points, was it, or 90 points? He did. That's Ronnie Seals being taken off. He did 534, I believe, was the number of push-ups. He said, I'd like to die. I can imagine. I can do 534, but it takes me a month. We'll check on Sears as soon as we can. And Houston will start from its own 20. So far, that has not been a problem for David Klingler. Both scoring drives have started at the 20. Weatherspoon. Boy, he gets going in a hurry. Stacked up as he got to the 25. Ball came loose, but after he was down again. Saul and Walker were in on the solid hit, and Walker really put a shoulder in there. One of the difficulties of playing Houston is the offensive line basically does about the same thing in terms of the way they start their block. They stand up first, just like at the pass, and so it's tough for the traditional read of the defense. There is a flag down on the long attempted pass to John Brown the third. We'll check the penalty for you. They decline it, it would be third and five. John Jenkins really believes that in this offense, they've got the ability to work on any kind of defense, any kind of strategy, and the only thing that beats them is themselves. And penalties will certainly do it. Still second down. It's really pretty much the philosophy you had in the wishbone. If you ran it right, you were going to win. Very similar in the kind of numbers that the offense has put up in terms of uh, total offense is much like the way the wishbone was in the early 70s. They take the penalty to make it second and 10 back at the 20. Klingler goes back to Good, and Good is wrapped up in a hurry. Great play by Ronald Ferguson. The corner who was right on top of him did not buy the play fake on the action to the other side of the field and stayed right with Tracy Good. Well, this time they're in a man coverage real quick, so they're breaking. So that's why Ronald Ferguson's right there. That's his man. And boy, he was not looking to fake. He was looking at who he had to defend. Got to cover your own man before you try to help somebody else. Third and 11. Three-man rush. Lissio puts the pressure on downfield wide open, and it looked like it may have bounced in there to Marcus Grant. All that was close. And he was wide open for Klingler. Watch the matchup of Jess at 72 against Washington, number 42. Just keep him out in front of him. It's a great just Push away. You've got to have the, the guy that wins in pass defense nowadays, the guy that has the longest arms, or at least pass blocking. Boy, it was wide open. You've got to stay with the receivers. He just kept drifting away from the defense. Fooled me a little bit by the way he bobbled that ball. Klingler comes back the other way. That was intended for Cody Smith. Let's go somewhere, maybe the sideline, maybe the roof, to Kevin Cutt. All right, thanks, Mike. Ronnie Seals has an injured right knee. They're working on it on the sideline. A point Spike Dykes before the game told me he felt that his, uh, the quarterback, uh, David Klingler, was not Andre Ware. If he could keep the game close, then maybe Klingler would maybe get a little bit tight and wouldn't play as well as Houston quarterbacks normally do, thus the two-point conversion. I think that was the purpose of it. Thank you, Kevin. 7.13 to go first half. Houston faces second and 10. Weatherspoon. Great cutting ability. Down to the 36-yard line. Quentin Rhodes makes the tackle. Seven carries, 70 yards for Weatherspoon. I didn't bother with the weather on the jersey. It's a sea spoon. Sea spoon run. <laughs> sea spoon run for 10 yards a shot. Klingler, a lot of pump fakes. Floats it for the end zone and overthrows. Wide open Marcus Grant. But may have not been that open when Klingler threw it. Cody! 
too many times tonight, Texas Tech's defensive backs are just drifting away from coverage or drifting away from the man that they have responsible for. And when the quarterback gets moving around, that's where these speed receivers, both inside receivers and outside receivers, just break. I mean, it's just like, I mean, it's just like a party happening and everybody's going to a different one. And I mean, promise you, these defensive backs lose those guys. I mean, they're, they're world-class sprint speed back there of those receivers for Houston. There are the numbers on Klingler, second and ten. Complete to the 21-yard line, and that is Verlin Brown. Weatherspoon, Stefan Weatherspoon, a distant relative of the two Houston Weatherspoons, makes the tackle. It will be another first down. 6.38 to go in the half. Klingler with time. That's good. To the 15-yard line. Dropped by Dubisky. This is a very good secondary for Texas Tech. Rated the number one in the Southwest Conference a year ago. They're all back and they're all young. Texas Tech has to get pressure on the quarterback. They've had success a few times in the first half. But this time, Bauman just holds out to Stephen Gaines, number 74, the freshman, and gives good protection for Klingler to be able to throw the pass. Second and three for John Jenkins' run and shoot. Comes the blitz. Klingler gets rid of it. Alexander, five, touchdown. What a call against the blitz. Are you kidding? Greg Jones, the center, threw a terrific block. And Alexander waltzed into the end zone untouched. And that's what John Jenkins means when he said, if we do it right, you can't stop this offense. Klingler just really knew exactly where to go for the ball very quickly. It was almost automatic. It was just like reading the option play. He knew exactly where he was going to go. He saw that motion and threw it. Anderson trying to make it a 10-point lead and does. One of the advantages for Klingler, he really has the experience for the offense. I mean, he knows it's a blitz, and so quick he knows exactly where he's going. That's his hot route. They've got man coverage, and all they do now is just ask the receiver to be like a running back. Greg Alexander, of all things, is the walk-on. What's this? One, two, three, quick. He knows he's got to throw it. He's got a blocker out there, 79 is Truett, and now just become a running back as a receiver. 5.35 to go first half. Houston has regained a 10-point lead. I'm James Buster Douglas. I'm the heavyweight champion, because I knocked out Mike Tyson. 21-11. Three long, quick drives for the Houston Cougars. Had them up by 10 in front of 36,700 here in Lubbock, Texas. Blackshear and Allen are deep to receive as Anderson kicks with the win and puts it nine yards deep in the end zone. The student athlete of the game is brought to you by the U.S. Army. Learn how to get an edge on life. Be all you can be. And tonight's recipient is Texas Tech quarterback Jason Rattan. He is a veterinary medicine major with a 3.77 grade point average. Our congratulations to him. We saw Rattan in the game a little bit earlier when Jamie Gill was bummed up. Gill has hit seven passes in a row. He's eight out of ten for 120 yards. Not doing too bad himself in a much more conservative style offense. Play action fake to Lynn. Gill wants it deep over the middle. And just off the fingertips of Richard Ross. Good coverage by Chapman and Jerry Parks. 17 also came over. Parks, the young man who got into such trouble at Oklahoma with a uh, shooting incident with his roommate, went to junior college, graduated from there, and finally transferred to Houston. And he was a big-time player at Oklahoma, still is a big-time player now at Houston. He was highly recruited. Everybody wanted him. Notre Dame wanted him. Oklahoma got him. 
and certainly Houston stayed after him. And then when he ran into trouble and started his life over, Houston got him finally. <laughs> Burnett comes on the blitz, picked up well. Complete pass to Mannyweather. Chapman forced him out of bounds. They've got to protect the quarterback, and they've got to take on Reggie Burnett when he's in a blitz situation. Lynn does a great job of putting him on the turf, and there's Gill standing tall and making the throw. They've, they've got to recognize where he is on the field, and then when he's trying to be a part of the forcing unit, they've got to stop him and keep him away from the quarterback. It's only a gain of six, so it's third down, four yards to go. Gill, deep sideline, Blackshear makes the catch at the 44, has the first down in front of Preston Bailey. A gain of 18. Again, just like I said earlier, Mike, they really are. Houston is giving them a lot of cushion in those deep zone areas because they're not going man. They're having the field, dividing the field with two defensive backs or safety and their strong safety. And they're really being able to get a lot of cushion. All they've got to do is give the quarterback time to make the good throw and not make mistakes. They'll bring this one back, however. The illegal receiver downfield on the play. And what was a first down on a third and four will now be third and long. And now the receiver downfield, still third down. Frank Shepard, the referee, making the call. Third and nine now, ball spotted at the 21. And there is the penalty story, almost even. Blackshear and Mannyweather, the wide receivers. And now I believe uh, the officials have corrected it and said it is also a loss of down, so it's fourth and nine. And that's exactly what they've done. And DeLagerheim will have to come on to punt. It's a good thing they didn't decide that after they'd run that play and said, oh, guys, that was fourth down. Sorry. DeLagerheim to kick to Weatherspoon. Not a very high kick, but it gets a good bounce. And doesn't stop until it reaches the 30-yard line. So a 49-yard kick with the roll, and Houston will start from there when we come back. At 53 to go till halftime. Klingler dumps it to Good on the little shovel pass. Good's in a lot of trouble, nowhere to go. Excellent coverage by the Texas Tech defense. Steve, uh, Stephon Weatherspoon messed up the timing as he came in and made good reverse his field, and then he got an awful lot of help. Sammy Walker came up from the corner. It will be second and 10. Look at the yardage for Houston. 278 in the first half. The Texas Tech's played pretty good defense. Weatherspoon on the delay. They got him this time, and it's the middle linebacker, Matt Wingo. Of course, run-stopping middle linebackers, uh, you don't hear too much about them against a the run and shoot, do you? No, you really don't. They're constantly <laughs> pedaling backwards and trying to make uh, drop back in the short zone areas. But that time, Wingo really made a play. They've got to be able to. St they wanted to come in and stop him when they did run the football, force him to throw the football every down if possible. That was exactly what they wanted to try to accomplish. Well, if you'd see Wingo on the street, you just know he was a middle linebacker. Three-man rush, Klingler with a lot of time, throws sideline, catch or not. 
And the officials say it is a catch. The 47-yard line will be a first down. Alexander makes the grab. You hear, you hear so many people talk about defense, offenses stretching you vertically. What Houston also does, they stretch you horizontally. They're three deep. They're divided up in thirds. That defensive back right there, number 25, Walker, has the deep third to that side, and he's just too soft. Lingler finds him and throws the ball to the open man. Jenkins signaling in the plays to his quarterback, and he'll relay them to everybody else. Clock turning, 3.04 to go in the first half from Lubbock, Texas. Changing it. Three-man rush again. Here comes a fourth and a fifth. Klingler airs it out. Brown, double covered, couldn't get there. Saul and Walker had him sandwiched. Brown ran a 9-8-900 meters in junior college. Wind aided, but he can fly. What Klingler saw, they go to a man formation. Watch everybody man up. They're going to find their man and get with him. See how these, everybody mans up? That's why he's going deep, trying to get a mismatch on, on a on a halfback or a cornerback that's trying to run with a speed receiver. Saul did a nice job getting over from his safety spot to help on double coverage there. And Klingler, with 2.47 to go, wants a timeout. He wants to go over to the sideline and talk about it. Timeout on the field, Houston 21, Texas Tech 11. You know, Dad always said, Norm Fighting Irish coach along with former Michigan coach Bo Schembechler will both be on along with Dick McPherson. This team playing Michigan State on ESPN Saturday night. And pretty good coaching talent at halftime. Yeah, we're number one. They learn it early in West Texas. Second and 10, the Cougars at their own 47. Klingler over the middle and threw it behind. Cooper. Klingler not quite as sharp right now as he was earlier in the ball game. Their receivers just do a great job of coming up there. They make three basic decisions before the ball is even, I mean, as the ball snapped. One at the pre-snap, one as they run the play, and then as they get into the play. And they really do a great job of making good decisions. Third and ten. Klingler sack from behind. Mike Lissio with the third sack of the ball game. Klingler never saw him. True at 79, he hasn't had the consistency that the coaches wanted. Boy, I mean, Lissio just bl blows by him, is able to get around him. The feet of Truett just weren't moving fast enough. Langston to punt to Saul. Low snap, comes up with it. High punt, Saul making the fair catch. He fumbled one a week ago against Ohio State in that 17-10 loss. Makes this after a punt of 40 yards and first down Texas Tech with a minute 57 to go in the half. Texas Tech offensively, Mike, they wanted to come in and control the clock and the ball. They've done that. They wanted to create their own tempo. They've done it, but not consistently. Yeah. And uh, with consistency, they've, they've not really broken down offensively, and they've not had any turnovers, but they're still down by 10 points. That's the scary thing. Houston <laughs> hasn't even looked that good, and they've got 21 first-half points. <laughs> We're going at halftime. Okay, Coach, now what do we do? We did exactly what you told us to do. Gill straight back. Looks like a jailbreak under a lot of pressure and throws incomplete intended for Lloyd Hill. We had protection for about two counts, and then everybody came. Burnett was leading the charge again. We've talked about Burnett. He's an excellent blitzer. This time, he just keeps following. He goes into the line, then breaks away. He's just got tremendous speed, and then his ability to put a blow on the quarterback. Got a little forearm shiver there at the end of that one. They want to recognize where he is on the field, and I promise you, Jamie Gill knows where he is every down. I'd find him. Second and ten, a minute 51 to go in the half. Lynn had an opening for a second, but Blount came up and made a big hit on him again, and Lynn went over the top, picked up a couple. 
Mike Patrick, Steve Davis, and Kevin Conley with you from Lubbock, Texas. And the favorite Houston Cougars are up by 10, 21-11 with time running out here in the first half. He joined us late in the ballgame, Verlin Brown, early, a 54-yard bomb from Klingler. That made it 7 to nothing. Finished an 80-yard drive. Elliott cut the lead to four with a pretty 47-yard field goal. But Houston came right back at Sherman Smith on a 40-yard bomb from Klingler. That was the end of another 80-yard drive. And then Anthony Lynn finished off an impressive Texas Tech drive to cut it to 14 and 11. They went for the two points and got it to Sheffield on a pass out of the backfield. But then Alexander got the third Houston touchdown of the first half. And Houston used the timeout to stop the clock here as Texas Tech will face a third and eight. Blount with 10 tackles so far. Burnett has six in the first half of that Houston defense. 10 tackles in the first half. Oh, this guy's having a career. One of the few non-Texas players on the Houston club. He's out of Memphis, Tennessee. Third and eight. Five men on the line of scrimmage, and they all come. Burnett puts the pressure on again. Gill throws complete, but well shy of a first down as Hill makes the catch. Tyrone Davis was right with him and wrapped him up. And now Houston will use another timeout to stop the clock with a minute 26 to go. And Gill unhappy as he comes to the Texas Tech sideline. He's got to be a little bit upset with the call because it was a blitz and he had to throw the ball quickly a long way across the field, not mm -hmm. really giving him a chance to get the first and 10 when they really needed it on third in a long situation. Gill 10 out of 14, 130 yards. Here you see the timeout situation. Not that Houston needs timeouts or anything else to score. Minute 26 is too much time. Weatherspoon, unusual to see a guy of his size and stature back as a punt return man, but he is. Came into the game averaging 8.7 on kick returns as the Red Raider fans try to fire up the crowd. Guy looks a lot like Charlie Toller, who used to play down here for Houston. Bowling ball with the legs. I was just a child. So was I. Delager Heim <laughs> gets it out of there. And he has to make the catch, Weatherspoon does, on the run at the 45-yard line. A kick of 36 and no return. So let's see what Houston can do with a minute 19. It took them less than that, their first two 80-yard drives. One of the things I really like about the Texas Tech defensive plan is sometimes radical offenses put you in a situation of a radical defensive plan. They've gone with their basic plan, kept their players comfortable with what they do and do best. A lot of teams will go against those radical offenses, be it wishbone or option game or pass, and do things they've never done but one time, and they don't play well against them. Klingler finally gets it out to Cody Smith. He crosses the 50 to the 45, taken out of bounds. They'll mark it at the 43. Sammy Walker drove him out of bounds. Remember for Texas Tech, they lost Charles Rowe, who was their leading tackler earlier in this half with a, an arch spring. Walker's been very active back there, too. Had a couple of big hits and good pass coverage. Well, you've got to be excited about the receivers of Houston. They not only are great receivers, but they're, they do wonderful things and exciting things with the ball once they catch it. They know where to turn. They have a feel of that defensive secondary. They make good decisions. And they're playing without Manny Hazard, who led the nation in receiving a year ago. He has a dislocated elbow. This time it's Cooper who makes the catch inside the 30 and is knocked down by Tony Brown. Well, they just come in in droves, guys with excellent hands and great speed. Tailor-made for this offense. Texas Tech's defensive secondary dragging it a little bit, not staying with the receivers. You've got to really bust it right now. This is getting down to close to four down zone. You cannot give up another score. Keep playing pass defense till the whistle blows. Klingler, 14 out of 24, 236 yards in the first half. 
with an average night at the office. Throws over the middle. This time, it did not look like Marcus Grant saw the ball and an airmail passed his helmet. These are scary numbers for a guy uh, who did not play all that much. Last year, he threw for eight touchdowns, had an interception. This year, he has eight touchdowns and one interception. Those are pretty good statistics. 16 touchdowns in your career and only two picks. Coach Jenkins, Jenkins talking about Klingler said that, boy, he's got all the things you want in the quarterback in this offense. He's got a strong arm, he's intelligent, and he wants to be a good player. He really wants to learn this offense. Second and ten. Weatherspoon, big hole up the middle. Bowls over Saul and gets to the ten. And you better get the license number when he gets loose in the secondary. Spoon can do some damage. Defensively, you've got to really concentrate. Don't think pass every time, and that's what happens. You get your head down, you're thinking pass rush, and all of a sudden, a guy that's about, you know, not very big just runs right by you, and that's exactly what happens. 5'7", 210. He's got 90 yards in the first half. Incomplete. Cooper couldn't hold it, and Brown was with it. Tony Brown, who had been burned a couple of times earlier, almost got burned again, reached a hand in there and able to strip Cooper. Tony Brown's a transfer from Purdue. This is his first year to play at Texas Tech. They really like him in terms of his developing ability. He's got good speed. He was third in the Big Ten and 100 meters, but he has made some mistakes in the first half. Second and 10 with 37 seconds to go. Blitz. Klingler in trouble, gets away, throws, and incomplete. Klingler somehow avoided the sack twice. There is a flag down on the play. Face mask on the defense, five yards. They got the face mask of the quarterback, David Klingler. Safety blitz from number 23, Dubisky, the strong safety. But watch the effort of Texas Tech. They really just, what's this? That's dogging it, guys. Make effort. Witherspoon tried to get in there, but Dubisky missed him and just let up. And I did not see a face mask. It looks like he was grabbed around the jersey, around the neck. And that was not a face mask, at least not from that angle. But that's what they call. Great defenses have fanatical efforts. Klingler. Incomplete intended for Brown. Nice coverage by Ferguson. This is a scary way to play pass defense for Ronald Ferguson. He really doesn't even know where the ball is. See, he's got it. He can't play pass defense if you're not if you don't know where the ball is. He's just guessing. Trying to play def defense with his body rather than knowing where the ball is, turning around and batting it away. Third and five. They could get a first down. They have no timeouts left. Weatherspoon. Touchdown. Let it go, Jeff. What a call. They spread the defense all over the field and then give it to the little guy, and he just rambles up the middle. Weatherspoon, 10 carries, 96 yards, and a touchdown. This guy's a little scary in his own right. Anderson will go for the point after. And converts. In this offense, Anderson could get a leg weary. One of the elements of the offense is to spread people out. Watch the three receivers. You've got all your secondary back, so you've got a soft side to the right side, and they're going to come back with a running play. See, they just don't have the manpower. And watch, I mean, everybody gets really rolled up inside, good block in the inside, blocking away, isolating an opportunity for Weatherspoon to go into the end zone. Wingo, the middle linebacker, was the only man who had a chance to make the play. He's the guy who's got to make the play in that defense, and he overran it. What's up, Mom? What's up, Dad? What's up, Callie? What's up, Bruin? What's up, Bruin? Pretty good first half, isn't it? Hey, Mom, how you doing? How about you, Mom? How about that, Mom? Running backs, you wouldn't think, would be real happy with a run and shoot, but when they see those numbers, they will be. 
and they don't carry it that many times to get those kind of numbers. That's right. It's very tough for those defensive linemen. They're rushing the whole time, and they create running lanes, opportunities for a running back to run through. The passing attack is an ever-present threat, so it's just a very difficult and somewhat different than they face week to week, so that's why you see those big numbers. And Barry Sanders has continued to get them with the Lions. Kickoff with the wind will sail deep again and out of the end zone. So with 23 seconds to go in the first half, Texas Tech, which appears to have played quite well in the first half, finds itself down by 17 points. It's got to be terribly discouraging to look up at the scoreboard. And that's one of the things that they've got to try to avoid, too, is not getting down on themselves. They really uh, they gave Houston too much time. They started the drive with a minute 21, and there's 23 seconds remaining. And it just you just cannot afford to give Houston the ball. See what will what they'll do with 23 seconds to go. Gill brings them out. Lynn on the delay. Midfield, Perry drags him down at the 47-yard line. 15 seconds on the clock, and they'll stop it with a timeout. Lynn finally gets the same kind of opportunity. Houston playing its pre-van defense and spread out, and Lynn had a huge hole up the middle. Got them spread out. They know that they're trying to move a long way at a very quick distance. Good block there by 50, number 56. Who's 56? Is that 50? Missed the block, but great block on the inside to free him into the end zone. Lynn now has 89 first half yards and a touchdown. That was Vernon Ankton that made the block. Tech has one timeout remaining with 15 seconds to go. And if you're thinking field goal, remember they're going into the wind here. So they probably need another 20 yards to give Elliott a chance. Gill with a little half ball. Throws complete to Hooper. And Hooper down to the 35-yard line. They will stop the clock as they move the chains. Nine seconds left. Gill trying to get his people lined up. As soon as the chains are set, they'll start the clock. They've got one timeout left. Wasting a lot of time here. And this turns out this will be the last play. And he's flushed. James Bevel came through and dumped him, and not good use of the remaining time for Texas Tech right there. They squandered the last nine seconds of the first half. And really, you'd think that the play on, on that particular call is to take the snap throw it away immediately. Get the ball, stop the clock, and give yourself a chance to have one more play. But they didn't, and they're down 28-21. That's the end of the first half. We'll be back to Lubbock, Texas after this. Recently, four-wheel... Problem is Saul, the safety in the middle of the field, doesn't know which way to go. He's got two places. He's playing halves, and that's the option in the receivers. Great job by David Klingler. Now, here's the blitz that also illustrates some of the problems. That's Saul 6, and number 13 is Weatherspoon. What's the blitz? What's the great play by the quarterback again? He reads it automatically, and then they get to be a basketball team. Watch this. A two-on-one break right there. Two guys on one. He makes a great effort on the catch, and that's the ability of the receivers all night long to do something after they catch the ball. Klingler made a great adjustment on that play through the ball sidearm. He looks like the perfect successor to Andre Ware. Well, he really has just played so well. He's made the right calls, and they expect him to. They don't think it's a big deal because he's experienced in this attack, and he's been able to make the right calls. One thing Tech has done, they've got pressure on him, and that's something he's not faced. If They've got to do that in the second half, Mike. They've got to mix up the coverages and give him a little bit more to look at than what he looked at in the first half. All right, we will be back with the second half kickoff from Lubbock, Texas, in just a moment. Sideline, let's listen in. All right, thanks a lot, Mike. Uh, John, first half, they got close. You guys pulled ahead. You can't turn this thing off, can you? 
No, you can't. I, well, you know, in our case, that last possession really meant a lot. You know, it's it's practically an even ball game if we don't go in and get that final score before the half. And we can't allow Spike to have any more momentum. we got to really, really turn it up a notch or two this third quarter. Well, your kids really don't need any encouragement on offense. With this offense, big plays happen as a matter of course, so they've got to always be pumped up. Yeah, they are, you know, it, it, but we, we let a lot of things get away from us. We're really rough on the edges, and, you know, hopefully we can we can really mesh pretty good together this this uh, second half right here. Okay, thanks, John. All right, Mike, back to you. All right, thanks, Kevin. A little scary when he says we're rough around the edges. If they ever get it smoothed out, everybody ought to run for cover. Well, the sacks of the quarterback and a couple of bad throws, those are the kind of things that they call rough on the edges. Yeah, it's really hurt him so far, hasn't it? I'd have been proud of that at Oklahoma. <laughs> Anderson to kick off the Blackshear and Allen with the win. And every time they, either team has kicked off from that side, they have put the ball in the end zone. Take a look at the halftime stats, and this is what Houston does so well. They run up some numbers. 235 yards passing, 83 rushing, it's over 315 yards in the first half alone. Not bad numbers for Texas Tech, especially when you look at the time of possession. They dominated time of possession, but you can't keep it away from Houston forever. Yeah, and really, that's not enough margin of possession time to really do the kind of things that you need to do. I mean, people would control the ball two-thirds of the time against them and still get beat by 20, 30, and 40 points. Gill leads out Texas Tech, and they need to score, and probably very quickly in this half. Mannyweather on the toss to the reverse. And a great play by Tyrone Davis, who came up from the corner to make the tackle. He saved what could have been a big gain as Spike Dykes goes deeper into his playbook. Mannyweather would wish that he had that play over because he cut it back inside when the play was outside. He just doesn't have the experience of running that play. And boy, the opportunities were on the outside and not turning it back inside. Gain of six, second, and four. Lynn. Boy, Burnett just closed from his outside linebacker spot in a hurry and helped Bevel and Mateka make the tackle. Burnett very quick along with Blount from the outside. They have shown exceptionally well tonight. And this is a Houston defense that had to be rebuilt from a year ago. Had a lot of guys drafted off this year. Texas Tech on third down. Virtually nothing tonight. In fact, less than nothing. Five-man rush. Gill with time, throws, complete. Let's see where they mark it at just across the 30. That should be enough for a first down. And a good grab out there by Byron Hooper out of San Antonio. Gill had to get rid of it, and Hooper had to go to the turf to catch it. Third down, or first down by the length of the football. Everybody talks so much about the Houston offense, and really their defense, they give a lot. They'll give up a lot of yards, but they're always turning the ball back. They're creating opportunities because teams are generally behind and they're playing catch-up, so they create opportunities and get the ball back to their offense. That's the whole focus of their defensive attack. Lynn had some room, couldn't keep the balance, and went down at the line of scrimmage. Mateka and Burnett were out there again, along with Johnny Johnson, who was forcing the play from his defensive end spot. The best linebackers in the country are the ones that are really mobile, have the speed, and just have fanatical effort. Watch it. I mean, that's just tremendous balance and athletic ability. I mean, he's scrambling over people and jumping over people and finds the man and makes the tackle. He is a fierce competitor and has great speed, and he uses it. Burnett, a senior out of Rayville, Louisiana, the defensive captain of this year. Second and ten for Gill. Burnett comes on the blitz again with a five-man rush. Pass complete to Anthony Stinnett, the junior college All-American. Gain of about seven. It will be third and three. When Jamie Gill has had time, he's delivered good throws. This time, they put a little pressure on him. They get man coverage. But still, Houston's giving them a lot of cushion. They've just not been able to take advantage of it. And you've not seen the receivers make the catch and then break for additional yardage. 
Gill on the quick count. Lynn trying to get the first down and has it out to the 45-yard line. Covered by Jerry Parts. Johnny Johnson got a piece of him to bring him down. Well, they tried to cross up Houston a little bit on that one. It went on the first sound. Clock running with 12 minutes to go, third quarter. Texas Tech down by 17. Burnett came three again and almost got there. The pass complete, however. Lloyd Hill with a diving catch. Tyrone Davis was there, but not close enough. A gain of 27. Hill, a high school All-American out of Odessa. In the last two pass plays, Mike, Houston has gone with pressure. That gets a man coverage. Tyrone Davis does a great job of being right there in terms of on the receiver, but Gill just stands up, stands tall, throws the perfect strike. That's pretty good coverage. You get a little bit behind him. Jerry Parks needs to go right through that receiver. He didn't that time. Sheffield, the fullback, inside the 25 to about the 23. Johnson is there along with Blount. Texas Tech is now getting into the tempo. They've been able to take advantage of the running opportunity, and when Gills had to throw the ball, he's been able to find the open receiver. Ninth play of this drive, and Texas Tech has done some pretty good things on offense tonight. But they are facing a machine in this Houston offense. Gill behind Sheffield, hurdles the tackler inside the 20 to the 17-yard line. And the tackle had to come from the secondary, Tyrone Davis and Preston Bailey. Good call that time. It looks like that they would be going to the field. They had the formation to the field, and yet they go back to the short side, and the opportunities are there. Houston was just out, man. There were more people on, on the left side of the ball than there were on the right. Good call by Tech. Lynn, 20 carries. He's cracked the 100-yard mark. Lynn again. This time, they're waiting for him in the middle. Blount and Burnett. Also in there, Ryan McCoy, the middle linebacker. This is a play that's designed for a cutback. Eric Blount, 42, the strong side linebacker. He, nobody is fooled. He just steps right in there. Also, there was a good effort by the inside, but the block was not made by Sheffield to give him an opportunity to go one-on-one -on -one with that linebacker. Second and nine. Comes the blitz. Gill had it knocked away. Loose football. Still loose. And Texas Tech got it back at the 30. What a break for the Red Raiders. Ryan McCoy, the middle linebacker, knocked it loose, and it looked like half a dozen Houston players had a shot at it. McCoy, a freshman, one of the better linebackers of Houston, he just goes over, commits, and that's a fumble. He was The ball was already away while his arm was going forward. That was a fumble before the time. Burnett tried to pick it up rather than fall on it. But it's third and 22. Blitz again. Gill gets rid of it, had his man Blackshear wide open and missed him. Good effort by Jamie Gill, though. They had the blitz on. They went man. He had to throw it quickly. He just throws it a little hard and where Blackshear can't make the catch. Make the right decision, though. They will go for the field goal with Lynn Elliott, who hit one from 47 yards, but that was with the wind. This one is into the wind of 46. He'll have to get all of this one. And it's just short. The wind too much to overcome for Elliott. And Texas Tech comes up short on an impressive drive. They still trail by 17. Grandma, isn't this fun? Oh. <laughs> I want my Serta. 
Why do people want a Serta? The answer is the exclusive Serta Surface. It'll spoil you for sleeping any other way. So get a Serta Perfect Sleeper. I want my Serta. Get big savings on your Serta and a free bed frame with any Perfect Sleeper during the Serta Double Bonus Sale at participating retailers. Dan Larson knows a secluded course where the holes are challenging, but the fees aren't. Now, where do you suppose he'd rent a car? Budget, where every rental passes 25 quality checks and price is not a handicap. Bob Nickel knows a little French cafe where the food is magnifique, but the bill isn't. Now, where do you suppose he'd rent a car? Budget, where he finds the most luxury Lincolns, over 3,500 locations worldwide, and very tasteful prices. The smart money is on budget. Jerry comes in every Saturday. Last week he wants copper pipe and solder. Now I know Jerry, so I say don't forget to shine the joints before you flux. And he says flux, so I told him to call me if he hit a snag. I think he called 11 times. Good service is why people choose a place like Ebers Hardware. Got nothing out of it. They still trail 28 to 11. Miss a long field goal into the wind, and Houston will take over from just inside its own 30-yard line. Klingler uh, has just thrown it everywhere tonight. Well, that's the design of their offensive attack to hit on multiple levels for the defense, and he is able to be very effective as the graphic shows all along the vertical area of the field. Inside reverse to good. Texas Tech covers it very well, and Rowe, who was supposed to be out for the entire ball game, is back in there at outside linebacker and made the play. There's Charles Rowe, number 38, the left side of the screen, injured in the first half, out of the ball game, we were told. He's back in and makes the play. Good effort, keeping containment inside, getting ready to force him back inside if he makes the cut. Good job. Excellent recognition on his part. Klingler under a blitz. Got away, there's a flag down. Klingler will run across the 40, steps out of bounds at the 42. Now we'll check the penalty, usually in the area of holding. Klingler's quite an athlete. Holding on the offense. So that'll set him back 10. Klingler, a fine basketball player, has a 38-inch vertical jump. He's got a 6'9 high jump and a 24-foot long jump. So he's got some speed and certainly athletic ability. the offense does you have a three or four man rush you lose containment because those inside receivers and outside receivers are taking away your backside containment and what happens that's why the quarterback he turns around nobody's there and he just kind of just goes on a little stroll for a first and ten well Klingler's not going to make anybody forget Witherspoon but uh, he can run There's no doubt that the offense is really modifying the way people think about football offensively. When Wishbone came in, had a lot of the same influences, people caught up with it. But run and shoot, you're seeing it in a lot of different offensive styles today. Weatherspoon, over 100 yards on the night and more. He's frightening when he gets loose in the secondary, up to the 37-yard line. Brian Dubisky had to make the tackle. Weatherspoon only listed at 210 pounds, but it's on a 5'7 frame. This kid is strong. This is not an element of the run and shoot. This is just effort and talent. He breaks a tackle. That's what made the difference. It wasn't the formation or anything. It's just personnel and execution by Weatherspoon to get into the secondary. Four tackling by Texas Tech. 11 carries, 113 yards. Led the nation in average yard per carry a year ago. Weatherspoon on the toss this time. Hurdles a tackler and is clobbered. Wingo held him up, and Tony Brown leveled it. A little payback for the Texas Tech defense. One of the things that Texas Tech wanted to do is get physical with Houston because it's such a finesse offense. I mean, they wanted to punish the running back. They want to punish the receivers, but they've not had too many opportunities. Unsportsmanlike conduct call against Texas Tech that will give Houston a first down. Wingo will make the play, number 45, but watch the spear by number four right there, the shot by Tony Brown. He's made some mistakes, 
getting a little bit over anxious and makes another big mistake that causes a penalty and better field position. You can't lose your poise in this. You cannot be intimidated by it, and you cannot make silly penalties. They're going to make enough yards on their own without your help. Aren't they ever? Klingler looks back to the far side, rifles this one to Brown, and Brown was taken off to his feet by Saul. Quentin Rhodes was on the coverage. That was a good throw by Klingler. It's about as hard as he's thrown the ball tonight. The safeties really have a tough assignment tonight. Kabisky and Saul. They're, oftentimes they're splitting the field in halves and they've got multiple receivers. If you don't get the quarterback throwing on time, then what happens, those speedy receivers, you've got four of them when you're only playing halves and four against two is not a fun way to play. Second and 10, Klingler still under 250 yards. Shovel pass to Weatherspoon. Look out, Weatherspoon to the 15 yard line. Walker tripped him up. Boy, it looked like Texas Tech Finally had the pressure on Klingler. He sucked him in and then shoveled it. And goodbye for Spoon. This offense will make you look silly. You do things right and you still make mistakes. Look at everybody. They're spread out. That's what creates, you create natural scenes because their rushing lanes are always there. And all Weatherspoon has to do is just wait for those guys to rush by and he's into the secondary. Another way to complete a forward pass and it's first and 10 from the 15. Klingler dumps it to good, and he's dragged out of bounds by Ferguson. Ferguson's done a good job tonight. He spent most of the night on good, who caught nine passes in the opening win against UNLV. Ferguson is out of Sugarland, Texas. Good has caught five passes, but only for 19 yards. And they'll give him five for 19. John Jenkins, whose reputation... Uh, well-established as an offensive coordinator in the United States Football League, the NFL, college, and now as a head coach. Got quite a system here. Second and six movement. Klingler throws back behind Good incomplete. Brown was also out there in the vicinity. Motion against Houston. If they turn it down, it would bring up a third and six. You know, you see Texas Tech struggling with stopping Houston, and you wonder, gosh, can anything stop them? Well, Texas A&M and Arkansas beat Houston last year. Texas A&M, both of them, they went out of strategy of a pressure defense, blitzed about 35, 40% of the time. Arkansas went out of strategy of drop back play defense, so no one has the right combination. It's a combination of a lot of things, and it has a lot to do with your talent. You've just got to beat them physically with the kind of personnel, but it is a tough offense to go and play defense. And John Jenkins insists that it can only beat itself. Now, we asked him uh, just how committed he was to it if he got a job in the north where it was cold and snowy all the time. He said it might not be the right offense to run. For every thought you have, he's got an answer. Doesn't he, though? He sure put together a great offense. Weatherspoon for the first time tonight, or make it a second time tonight, does not get good yardage on the run. Stopped by the middle of that defense. Lissio was down there on the bottom of the pile, and Spoon only got it to the nine. You know, people make all sorts of things. They say, well, it's tough on the quarterback. Well, Jim Kelly, when he ran for Houston, he was sacked something like 80 times, but he had 44 touchdown passes. So yeah. there's a trade-off on every aspect of the offense. Anderson will try a 26-yard field goal. And it's through, and Houston adds to its total. The Cougars, through two and a half quarters, now have 31 points and lead by 20. Tech has not played too badly defensively, yet they've given up a lot of points. That was reflected at halftime. No changes in the defensive philosophy. They felt they simply got beat at the corners. Houston has great speed at the receiver position. The strategy for the second half, play better, keep them out of the end zone, which they did on the last drive. Kevin, it's a little frightening when you say, well, we just got to play better. You can't do anything <laughs> differently. We'll just play better. Just keep playing better. <laughs> That'll get it. Roman Anderson to kick it off. He has put every kick with the wind into the end zone, as has Elliott for Texas Tech. 
and they'll have to start from the 20. John Jenkins on the sideline in that last scoring drive. One of the shorter ones of the night, 61 yards, only took 239. Anderson finished it off with a 26-yard field goal. Larry Gatlin has joined us in the booth. Man who put on a terrific halftime show here and was at Houston. He's got to be a happy man tonight. Yeah, it's equaled only by the offense of Houston. <laughs> well, they sung all the gold in California, but my favorite is still the Midnight Choir. <laughs> Play action. Gill throws near sideline and short. Had Manny Weather open, but skipped it to him. And I think the frustration may be settling in a little bit on Texas. Tech. Well, a little bit. But I, you know, Gill has had the open receiver and he's made good throws. That time he made a poor throw, but you know the coverage is giving him enough time and an opportunity to complete the passes. He just made a bad throw. You got to complete those. Boy, you need some confidence. You need something going positive for you, and he just hasn't been able to create it just yet. Gill has hit only four of his last eight for 16 yards. Lynn on the toss. Burnett forced him to turn back inside, then got an awful lot of help. Very quick linebacking tonight for Houston. And as much as we have talked about their offense, their defense deserves a lot of credit. That's Larry Coyer, the defensive uh, coordinator for Houston. Boy, their strategy is just create opportunities for your offense, get the ball back to them. And really, everybody respects the offense, but the defense is very talented. And when you've got an offense that's so prolific and produces a lot of yards, you want to create a defense that gives them back the ball. And that's exactly what they've done tonight. And they've the done youth, their job. The yes. youth on defense, third and 11. Gill straight over the middle, and it looks like he's trying to short arm some of those passes. That was knocked away by Kenny Perry, intended for Sheffield coming out of the backfield, and they'll have to punt it away again. And the 36,000 plus, pretty quiet right now, and in, in Lubbock. He's got good protection, nobody in his face. Threw the ball a little bit behind Sheffield, the fullback that was coming out of the backfield. The Lagerheim to punt to Weatherspoon, not a good kick off the side of his foot, and it takes a Houston bounce and down to the 43-yard line, and the Cougars will have tremendous field position. With 5.21 to go third period, we've got a timeout on the field. Houston leads by 20. You want to be near the water. You want it to be different. Well, loosely speaking, I played. I, I played for 13 total minutes in my, my four-year career there. But I played behind two All-Americans, two great players. Kenny Abair won the National Scoring Championship my first year of eligibility. He graduated, and I thought, this is my chance. I'm going to get to play. And they recruited a young man from Sweeney, Texas, named Elmo Wright. <laughs> and I moved to Nashville and started singing songs. Well, in this offense, if you played 13 minutes, you could have scored 10 times. At, at least 10. They can really move at Camden. Larry, thanks very much. Thank Appreciate you all. God bless. We had a great time, Mike. Thanks. So we Good enjoyed it, too. You. Thank you. Klingler under the blitz. Pick it up really well, and he guns it down the middle. What a catch! Grant with the dive came up with it. And these guys are frightening. Their top receiver, Hazard out with a dislocated elbow. They have an off week next week, so he should be back in two weeks and ready to play again. But one weapon after another. And Weatherspoon may be the most impressive of all of them. When we're faked it to Weatherspoon, goes back and good, couldn't hold it at the 12. Quentin Rhodes on the coverage. Steve, when you take, there's Manny Hazard on the sideline, led the NCAA in receiving last year, 142 catches and 22 touchdowns. I mean, most good receivers don't have a career where they get 142 and 22 scores. Steve, you have now had a, a, a real good look at this run and shoot, and I have sensed that you have been more impressed as the game has gone along. Well, especially when you watch Texas Tech do good things on defense and still give up a lot of points. Incomplete, throwing into the corner. 
intended for Sherman Smith, who made a big catch in the first half. It's a great system. It works for them, and they've got the kind of talent. They go and recruit different type of people. You know, you've got to be really committed to an offense when you don't carry tight ends on your roster. And they don't have any tight ends, but they've got great depth at the receivers. They've got the little guys that have great speed inside. So if you're out there and you're small and you've you got good speed, you can go to Houston and catch the football. You've got some pretty big guys on defense, too. Third and 10 for the Cougars, already up 31 to 11. Incomplete. That time they tried to trick him and go to Marcus Grant after faking the screen to the near side. And Grant, so intent on the route he was running, couldn't hold the ball. So they will go on to the field goal unit again. And Anderson will come on. This has got to be very depressing for a defensive unit. You feel you're doing a good job and stopping him. And then you look up at the scoreboard. You're down by 20 and now maybe 23. As Anderson will have a 31-yard field goal attempt. is wide. Houston finally makes a mistake on offense. Let's get down to the sideline and Kevin Kiley. Kevin? All right, Mike, this is Manny Hazard. Now, he led the nation last year. He took the night off with a dislocated elbow. Now, how do you feel? You led the nation. They don't miss you. Well, I, I feel kind of strange not playing tonight, but, you know, uh, we have great receivers in this offense, and, and we're playing great tonight. When are you going to be back? Um, hopefully for the Rice game. I'll, I'll be out for probably about two weeks, and my elbow feels fine. It's just a little swollen. Not bad playing for the run and shoot, huh, for a receiver? No, it, it's a receiver's dream, and, and I encourage anybody that, that likes to catch passes and likes to be a part of a, 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 a dominant offense to come here. You like to catch passes? Yes, I do. I like <laughs> to throw the ball. All right, thanks, Manny. Back to you, Mike. Gill gives it to Lynn. Thank you, Kevin. And Lynn picks up about five. Stopped by the corner, Tyrone Davis. You saw last week's game as Texas Tech played Ohio State tough in Columbus. But they have run into an offensive buzzsaw here against Houston. The Cougars not uh, racking up quite the numbers they had a year ago. Not quite the yardage, but certainly impressive enough. And they're well on their way to 2-0. Gill pump fakes, then goes sideline, complete to Manny Weather, broke a tackle across the 31st down. Chatham had him and couldn't hold him. Manny Weather will be remembered in Texas Tech history if for nothing else than the 65-yard grab he made a year ago to beat Texas. A huge game for Texas Tech. It was one of only 13 catches he made a year ago. He and Blackshear will go to the far side on first and 10. Clock running, 3.40 to go third quarter. Gill threw it. Boy, bounced it off the ankles of Shane Sears, and I'm not sure that he didn't do that on purpose because Sears would have been dumped as soon as he got the ball. Well, this is the time if you're the quarterback, you've got to really try to make good throws. He might have, Mike, I don't know, but the, the frustration is he's made some bad throws. They're not being able to get any momentum going. They're, having, they're going three or four plays, and they're having to punt the football, and they've just not been able to get any consistency, and Houston's been able to go short distances for either a field goal or attempted field goal. Second and ten. Here comes Burnett. They held him, and he still got there. Burnett ran through the block of Bingo Mancillas and got some help from Hooper. Mancillas, number 78, just really right here on the outside watching. He doesn't do a very good job at all. He's holding, actually. He's going to grab him in the back of the shirt. He just, boy, I tell you, Burnett is just too much of a player. Just goes right around him. His speed just keeps his tenacity going towards the quarterback, and they just can't keep him out. Texas Tech's offensive line is not as settled as they want it to be. They struggled against Ohio State last week at times. Well, we have one return and starter in that offensive line. Lynn on the draw. Broke a tackle, runs through another one up to about the 32-yard line. They need to make the 42 for first down, so they'll have to kick it away. Cadrez and Burnett on the tackle. Burnett in there again. I really wouldn't be 
surprised if we see a quarterback change because the momentum is not there. They've got to create something and make something happen. Maybe it's time to make a little bit of a change. Go with another quarterback. They've got three. The Lagerheim, who got off a bad one the last time, will punt to Weatherspoon. Good kick this time. Weatherspoon signals fair catch and makes it to 32. Texas Tech has produced some outstanding players, maybe none better than Donnie Anderson. 102 points in 1965, rushed for over 700 yards, received for nearly 800, and his total offense, all-purpose yards, was a record for the Southwest Conference until it was broken by Weatherspoon last year. And he may do better than that this year. 2,391 yards. He's been a 1,000-yard rusher for two seasons in a row got almost 302 games already. He's tough. He's durable. He just stays in the lineup. He punishes people. He doesn't carry the ball that many times a game, but he's just very productive in this offensive style. Well, uh, broke Greg Pruitt's all-time record for yards per carry last year, 9.6. This time, he's not going to get 9.6. He's not going to get one as John Wood out of Lake Tahoe, Nevada brings him down, and then we have a little pushing and shoving him. You know, you mentioned Greg Pruitt. Greg Pruitt made all those yards running the wishbone at a time, but the wishbone was really in its heyday. People couldn't adjust to it, much like people are not adjusting to what the run and shoot does. So those two offenses produce great running backs with big stats. Wood lost his cool on this one after making the nice stop. They were really concentrating on trying John Wood, number 70. Reached out and grabbed the face mask and then shoved him after the play. Well, I tell you, when you've done things right, you really do get frustrated, and that's exactly what happened to him. Houston may be a little more balanced than normal. 21 running plays, 34 passes. Well, right now, the ball game's not a threat. I mean, they're being able to run their offense, do things, get better. You know, they've only played one football game. They've got a lot of things ahead of them to look forward to. And they're trying to implement their offense and do a lot of things and create opportunities for themselves. John Jenkins is the man who makes the call, and they were having trouble setting the uh, sideline markers. They finally do first and 10 from the 40. Klingler throws to Moore, couldn't hold it. Dubisky out there on the coverage. Stop the clock with a minute 40 to go in the third quarter. This one certainly isn't over. Texas Tech has shown it can move the ball on Houston. They just haven't been able to put points on the board since uh, about midway through the second quarter. One of the problems with the Tech coaches, they weren't one, they had a very short period of time. This is obviously everybody knows Thursday night. Sure. They didn't have a lot of preparation time. They get off the plane from Ohio State. Now they've got to get ready for something totally different. Klingler guns it to Grant. And Grant knocked out of bounds to the sideline. And there is a flag down back at the 32-yard line. Let's check that. Crowd getting a little restless. Now the officials will talk it over. Running the passer on the defense, first down. Watch number 70, John Wood. John Wood is losing his composure, his, his poise, which is so critical in this ball game. Okay, the play is over. Get away. Oh, yeah. That's unnecessary. Now, he didn't body slam him, but uh, he didn't try to lay off either, and Spike Dykes is going to let him know about it. I'll tell you, Spike is telling him, too. You hurt your football team with plays like that, and he's made two fine physical efforts and two mental mistakes on top of those. Spike is a great communicator. We've had a lot of fun with him this weekend. Yeah. This week. Nice man who's done a fine job with this program. First and ten. Houston does not need the help. Klingler under pressure tries to sidearm it. They had another center screen set up. Klingler went down. He wasn't happy about it. Lissio was coming hard, so was Fred Petty. Lissio, 91. Fans 
thought it was an intentional grounding by the quarterback, but he was trying to throw. They were setting up the screenplay to Weatherspoon. Second and ten. Ball up to Texas Tech, 31. Klingler has all day, finally throws over the middle. What a great catch by Cooper! Touchdown! Holy cow, what a play by Cooper! He had a man draped all over him, made the grab, and then made the run on top of it. And John Jenkins talking to Klingler. I think he's telling him he threw it to the wrong guy, but it worked out pretty well. Cooper, who has great hands, showed it on that one. And that is four touchdown passes for Klingler. Anderson converts. 343 yards passing for Klingler, four touchdowns. Part of the problem with Tech is they've not been making the big play out of the secondary, but this time this is just poor tackling. The defender is there, that's Tony Brown, who's busted a few times tonight. He just doesn't wrap up the receiver, Patrick Cooper, and make the play. That's just poor execution of doing the things that you do against any opponent that you play. It's been a long night for Tony Brown. He has really struggled tonight. And again, because of four receivers, one running back that also catches the ball, you've got people that are playing more in the secondary. They're a little bit, they're out of their element. Short preparation time. They're working up against a lot of speed of those receivers. But what was really great about Cooper that time, I mean, he called the ball. These guys, when they catch it, right, they know what to do with it. Great balance and concentration of these receivers. They like to look for uh, high school running backs that are smaller backs with speed that are not going to be recruited by some of the other major schools because they don't fit their system, but they fit this system perfectly. And then they catch a bunch of balls in practice. Yeah. 118 to go in the third quarter, and the route is on. Houston 38, Texas Tech 11. And Manny has it on the phones to the coaches upstairs. I think he's telling them to turn the air conditioner on the bus. Come on, come on, come on. You can back it up and get it ready. Anderson has crushed every kickoff into the end zone. This one's a little shorter, but still eight yards deep, and Blackshear will down it there. ESPN's College Football Saturday will continue this weekend. We have two games on tap for you, starting at 12.30 Saturday, an Ivy League game between Penn and Dartmouth, and then at 7.30 Saturday evening from the Carrier Dome in Syracuse, the Orange Men against number 19, Michigan State. It's all coming your way Saturday on ESPN as we really get into the meat of the college football schedule. Already had some great games and some unbelievable upsets early in the year. Miami going down early and giving Notre Dame number one, a spot they may not give up, although Michigan would like to have something to say about that. Texas Tech back on offense. And Lynn will get the carry. And we have a Texas Tech player injured, and it's Sheffield, the fullback. Last thing Texas Tech needs at this point is some more bad news on the injury front. Gill was hurt earlier in the ballgame, as was Rowe. Let's see if we can see how Sheffield, the fullback, gets injured. The left side right there. Oh, it's a lineman. They're blocking, and the lineman blocks over his feet are planted, and the Houston lineman rolls over his foot. Sheffield, a 230-pound junior out of San Antonio. He already lost the man before the season started to academics, Anthony McDowell, who was probably going to be a starting fullback. Sheffield would have spent a lot of time there, but uh, now Sheffield plays most of the plays and in obvious pain. And we saw Spike Dykes. We, I really believe that he thought they would play much better. I mean, he seemed like even though it's short practice time, preparation, they felt like they had a good, smart plan, the kind of athletes. And Texas Tech needs to make that next step. Last year, 9-3, and three, they want to go compete for the Southwest Conference Championship. Last year, they got out of the race pretty quick. So I'm, I know it's discouraging for Coach Dykes because they just haven't been able to make the big things happen in the, in the plays that really needed. 
standings from last year and Houston uh, just a game behind the Razorbacks who were the champions at seven and one Texas Tech came on strong at the end but as Steve said they were out of the race early finished at five and three and they were picked to finish uh, ninth in this league last year picked uh, seventh eighth or ninth this year I don't think a lot of people thought Houston was going to be that good not with all they lost defensively and the loss of Andre Ware but uh, they are serving notice on people that uh, they are going to be a factor and Sheffield is not going to be able to get off under his own steam. Well, like we said in the open, you know, a lot of people say that, you know, that it's, the offense is a fad, it's no big deal, but I've yet to find a defensive coordinator in the country that wants to play against it every week. I don't think you could find a defensive coordinator who want to play against it any week. Ever, ever. <laughs> running with a minute to go third quarter Texas Tech needs points and they need them in a hurry Gill rifles this one over the middle of Blackshear and Blackshear down to the Houston 42 yard line that's a play they had open earlier and missed and Gill got some more steam on that pass. And it's a, the first time that you've seen a receiver really do something after he catches the ball. Houston's defense has given a lot of cushion, but the receivers of Texas Tech have not been able to take the ball and advance it. He catches the ball at the 40. He runs 15, almost 20 yards after he catches the ball. Look at the cushion of Houston. A lot of room. Goes right down the middle. The first time they've really gotten some after the catch. Lynn, who's had a big night. Gets a couple of great blocks. Blount brought him down as he reached the 35-yard line. Blackshear, his wide receiver, threw him a good block. See the clock ticking down in the third quarter. Lynn, 26 carries, 128 yards. So in two games, he's averaging better than 100 yards a game. Very outspoken about the fact that uh, he will get over 1,000 this morning for the single-season rushing record here. Movement. Texas Tech jumps off sides as the tight end Steve Carr, who got away a count early. And the clock reads zero. Dead ball, false start on the offense. We'll run one more play in the third quarter. Quarter cannot end on a penalty against the offense. Car out of El Paso is a sophomore who shovels in the plays with Jeff Hume. Texas Tech came in. I really felt like offensively they had a smart plan and a realistic plan. They didn't have a too much of a cluttered plan because I think you, you've got to be beware of the barrenness of too much in your game plan. And they really came in with a smart plan that they've just not been able to implement. Second and six after the penalty. Here comes the blitz. Gill hangs in there throwing. Manny Weather can't get it inside the five. Zach Chapman was with him, but he was beaten by a step to pass just overthrown. That is the end of the third quarter here in Lubbock, Texas. It's Houston, 38, Texas Tech, 11. Third and six for the Red Raiders from the Houston 40. Cougars show blitz and come with it. Gill still has time and throws short. That's about four of those. He had stinted open and came up short. There is a penalty flag down, and this one will go against Houston and keep the drive alive. Houston has not made many mistakes tonight, but this is one of them. Looks like Jason Youngblood. Number 98, he's the best down lineman of the group for Houston. Oh, yeah. Oh, you, you just got to be able to shut it down, get away from him. Yeah, he takes his hands off after he decks him. Jamie Gill did a good job. He knew the blitz was coming. He kept his poise, but he just didn't make a good throw. You got to stand in there, take the hit, throw the ball. As he found out, you're going to get hit anyway. Stripped this time by Youngblood. Loose ball, and it looks like Houston may have it, or did Texas Tech get it back? They got it back. Youngblood atoned for that mistake, came in, got a hand on it, and knocked it away. And it looked like Brad Elam, the center, made the recovery.
Texas Tech is playing a lot of second-team offensive linemen. Peter Allen is a redshirt freshman, just lets him go right by Jason Youngblood, and that's what calls the play. Second and 20, Gill under pressure again, and just threw that one away. James Bevel putting on the pressure. Back to the sideline, Kevin Kiley. Kevin? All right, Mike, bad night for Texas Tech. Ankle injuries seem to be the thing. Here's Louis Sheffield, the fullback, left ankle injury. Remember, Charles Rowe went down with an ankle injury. Marcus Washington had an ankle injury. The turf's been tough on Texas Tech. And yeah, that sounded pretty good, didn't it, Mike? <laughs> turf sounds tough. <laughs> Easy for you to say. How about the Cougars been a booger? <laughs> <laughs> Easy for you to yeah. say. <laughs> Third and 20 for Texas Tech. Five-man rush this time, and Gill has time. Floats it down the sideline. Contact between the receiver, Mannyweather, and the defensive back, Chapman. And Chapman never looked, and Mannyweather is really upset about it, and he's getting an earful from Kenny Perry. Mannyweather doesn't have a whole lot of size. He's, work, is that, he's working on Chapman, number 18, and also 17 Parks is in there. Well, Chapman reached the arm back around and grabbed him around the chest. This will be a 52-yard field goal attempt by Lynn Elliott with the win. And he's got it. Lynn Elliott, with plenty of room to spare, has kicked two with the win and missed a long one into the win. So Tech gets on the scoreboard, but that only cuts it to 38-14 to with 13.58 to go in the game. That is a career-long field goal for Lynn, 52 yards. And the Red Raider fans have something to cheer about. The storyline from Lubbock, Texas. Houston scoring almost at will now. Klingler is thrown for nearly 350 yards and four touchdowns. Houston nearing the 500-yard mark in offense. And the Houston defense has done its part. They have sacked the quarterback five times in this game. Special teams have done a pretty good job, too. We might as well pass along kudos to everybody. stopped a Houston 24 to nothing run that has blown this game open. Houston anticipating an onside kick. A lot of people up across the 50. Four more behind them. Elliott goes for the two bouncer. The ball's loose. But the Cougars got it. Jenkins, number 50, gets credit for the recovery. Boy, kickers seem to have that, that little move patented. The second bounce goes up, and it makes it tough to catch. That time, Texas Tech, in terms of their team as a recovery team, they go down the field, and they really outrun the football, and it's behind them, and then Houston's able to make the recovery. So the Cougars take over at the Texas Tech 41-yard line. Klingler calling the play at the line of scrimmage after getting it from John Jenkins, his head coach. Klingler with time goes back to good as safety valve receiver down to the 33. And a lot of people are going to say, why, with a 38 to 14 lead, do you continue to throw the football? Well, they throw the ball every play uh, out of five plays. Four will begin in a pass when the national average in college football, two plays begin out in, a, in a pass situation. That's their ball control offense. That's the key. That's what they do best. Their short passing game is just like the running game uh, that any other normal football team would have. And they only have a couple of running plays that don't come off the pass. Looped for Brown, and he can't get it. There's a flag down on the floor. Now, you see him throw deep, and you say, well, gosh, they're really trying to score. Well, it's no, it's what the defense is giving them. If they get man coverage, then they're going to go deep naturally. 
Defense was offside. Of course, uh, Jack Pardee heavily criticized last year when he was the head coach when they had more than 90 points against SMU. But Jack explained that, uh, maybe not to everybody's satisfaction, but he explained it by saying SMU played everybody up the line of scrimmage and tried to force us to throw long. We threw long, and people caught it. But still, you think there would be some way to hold it under 90. I don't care how good you are. Well, you would think there. <laughs> of course, I don't think Coach Jenkins is going to tell us. No. <laughs> Here comes the blitz. Wingo gets the sack. Got the Klingler at the 35. We've got that Jack Lambert scowl, doesn't he? You know, those guys wear that neck brace back there. They just look meaner than everybody else. Heads bowed down. I mean, he just makes the beeline for you. You know, Klingler just sees him too late. Klingler was lucky he had time to duck on that. Second and 17. Those linebackers will leave some of your best body parts all over the Southwest <laughs> Conference if you don't watch it. Klingler with time. That's good. To the 25. Out of bounds at the 23. The coaches were not pleased in the Ohio State game with the way that they tackled. And they have missed a lot of tackles. And these can give credit to Houston receivers. They are excellent once they catch the football, finding the open area, getting away from the pressure. They just have another sense of, of where the pressure is coming to because they practice this offense. They know exactly the angles of the pursuit that the secondary situation will create, and they know how to get around it. Third and five. Donnie Brooks made that last tackle for Texas Tech. Here comes another blitz. And the pass thrown behind Brown, who was open at the 15-yard line. Saul was coming on a safety blitz and almost got there. Forced Klingler to unload it in a hurry. And this will bring Anderson on to try a field goal into the wind of 40 yards. And he'll need a pretty good leg to get it there. Kicking in this direction has not been easy tonight. Boy, he nailed it. Into the wind and everything, a 40-yard field goal by Roman Anderson, and it's 41-14 Houston. We asked the International Motorsports Association to challenge the top four compact 4x4s in a test of climbing power in the Baja. The Baja. Off-road racing doesn't get any tougher. All four powered up the hill. But Chevy S10 left the others in the dust. The new 1991 Chevy S10. Kicking dirt and taking names. The heart Today's truck, Chevrolet. Nobody's winning like the heartbeat of America. And by John Deere, nothing runs like a deer. 12-21 left to go in the game. Houston now leading Texas Tech. 41-14 in Lubbock. Houston to kick off. 12-21 to go, and Texas Tech down 28-11 at the half, has not been able to respond here in the second half. Anderson, who just kicked a great field goal into the wind, will kick off. Blackshear and Allen are deep. Blackshear at the one. 30, 40, he's got the kicker to beat, and tripped him up. Roman Anderson got a hand on his ankle and brought him down after a return of 56 yards. It's a great kick, good and high. You get, you see the forming the wall over to the side. Breaks, and then it's just the kicker. You just can't get by the kicker. You just got to make a move. Tried to chop it down a little bit, but great effort by the kicker to make the tackle. Jeff Hulme, the tight end, threw a great block for him that sprung him down the sideline. Gill runs the option. Pitches it to Marshall, who's knocked out of bounds. Let's go to the sideline. And Kevin Kiley. Kevin? All right, Mike and Steve. One of the great traditions of Texas Tech football right here, this bell, Bangin' Bertha, donated by the Santa Fe Railroad and handled by ambassadors of goodwill and spirit here. Ba Bertha's had most of the night off. Let's bang Bertha one time for the folks in America. Great bell. Mike, Mike, these are clearly the best of times here. 
<laughs> yeah, and I'm glad you get to do this thing. This Gil Benson throw. And incomplete. Good defensive play. Tyrone Davis down there on the coverage. As it was intended for Richard Ross. The contrast from the first half to the second half, you just rarely saw Jamie Gill have very much pressure in the first half. But here in the second half, the defensive front of Houston has put more pressure on him, and he's always been throwing with someone around him, so he's had a little bit tougher time in the second half. Third and 11. Here comes the blitz. Gill hangs in there, completes the pass to the 33-32 yard line, goes Blackshear. He had guys draped all over and parks in on the stop. But it's enough for a first down for the Red Raiders. The coaches were not pleased with the Texas Tech offensive line performance. I mean, they're just letting young blood 98. I mean, he's a 285-pound guy on your quarterback. You've got to be able to block and protect that perimeter of that offensive line and turn out, and they're just not being able to do it. He's made several plays. Marshall on the toss. Got great speed to the 20, pound to the 15-yard line. Stinnett threw a pretty good block for him downfield. Chapman and Bailey make the tackle. Marshall runs a 4-3-4, 40. Usually you see that kind of speed in receivers, not tailback. And we have a penalty on top of it. They'll spot the ball at the eight first and goal for Texas Tech. Well, let's check out the penalty. They're not going to tell us. The secret. It is to me. Fumble. Marshall coughed it up, never really had the handoff. And they say Texas Tech got it back at the eight-yard line. Marshall is a freshman. He really didn't ever have his hands correct, didn't protect it, put the ball away. It was a fumble from the start. Marshall comes out of the ball game after that fumble. And Lynn is back in there, a tailback. On second and goal from the seven. Stinnett is the only wide receiver. Lynn on the toss. Houston strings it out pretty well, but he cuts it back. Touchdown. Lee Moore is right guard through a good block. And he was able to cut inside one defender and score. Salina, Texas, certainly impressed the home crowd. Elliott will go for the point after. And has it. In this offset eye formation of Texas Tech, watch the fullback as he goes in motion. He's got to make the key block. Watch him. There's also a good block by the lineman there, 58 Lee Moore, and the fullback's block. Houston had it defense pretty well, but those two key blocks really made the difference. Watch Lee Moore, 58, and the fullback coming around. Shears, the two blocks, good effort there. Just turn it upfield. Houston was, had it strung out, but those two blocks made the play happen. Lynn gets his second touchdown. And with 10.39 left, it's 41-21. Stranger things have happened. Texas Tech, as we have seen, can score in a hurry. And Houston uh, has nine men waiting for the onside kick. Fans here are hopeful, although several have already left. They'll kick it away this time. 
put it out of the end zone. Perry just watched it sail over his head. Scoring drive, uh, only a minute 42, went 43 yards, and Lynn finished it off. You can see some good things in this Texas Tech football team. Just, just not enough of them are points. <laughs> <laughs> The offensive line is going to get a real evaluation yes. in the films tomorrow, I promise you, because they're playing a lot of second-team players. They're still trying to find that right mix, and they just uh, are not able to really control the offensive line tonight and give the opportunity to get the offense really rolling. Weatherspoon on the delay. He's across the 25 to the 26. Klingler has thrown for 362 yards tonight. Wingo makes that tackle. And Weatherspoon has had himself quite a night offensively. 61st time in three years that they have uh, either a rush or receive over 100 yards. If they don't have nine receivers catch the ball, a 300-yard passing night and a 100-yard rushing night, they feel like they've had a bad night. And they have it almost every time they play. Weatherspoon fights off a couple of tackles and gets up to the 29-yard line. It's tough to get your arms around them, to wrap them up. Listed at 210 pounds, looks like his chest and his thighs weigh 210 pounds. Well, when those guys start to do that pass blocking the way they kind of, they pass block when they run block a lot of times, you can't find him, it's the short. Third and two. Go with the blitz, flag is down. They did not get the first down on the rush, but they are going to get it on the offside. Offside, defense, first down. Trying so hard to get an advantage, and they got there a little early. Charles Rowe, number 38, trying to anticipate, trying to make something happen. Just gets caught right in the zone there, and he's offside. The ball comes out uh, past the 33. That's 11 penalties on Texas Tech tonight for 85 yards. Klingler buying some time back there. Throws too high for Alexander, and he paid the penalty, and there is a flag down. Sammy Walker nailed him. And, boy, I don't know. I don't see a reason for that flag. Walker just went up and unloaded as he has every right to do on a receiver. One of the things we've talked about tonight, you've got to stay with the receivers. Walker walks away from the receiver. I don't know. Oh, no. I, I don't agree either. No I, way. I think they have a reason. I mean, you're that close. It, you don't have time to look no. for the ball. You've, you've got to hit the guy. You've got to assume it's a, well, it was it a catchable ball? Yes, I yeah. think it was. And this is football, guys. Mm -hmm. You know, this, this ain't beanbag, the way they used to say. Well, all so many rule changes have been designed for the safety aspect of the game, and they're trying to protect those vulnerable receivers, but it appeared to be a catchable ball, and it looked like a clean, healthy hit. Playing we're changing the play. Tough break for Walker, who's had a good game. He's a good defensive back. Klingler against the blitz, throws to Brown. Brown to the 46-yard line. He's tackled by Quentin Rhodes. Look at the numbers in the last 36 games for the run and shoot. I mean, 500 yards seven times, 601, 701. How many passing yards did you have at Oklahoma? Do not get into that discussion. <laughs> I mean, are we talking the last figure there? Uh, 300, 369 tonight for Klingler. Throws back. Texas Tech really getting some paybacks here as Tracy Good makes the catch and David McFarland drills him. I don't think I'd want to be catching a pass right now. I mean, they're uh, painting bullseyes on these guys. First half, they weren't able to make those kind of hits. They wanted to be physical against Houston, but they just were not able to because there was a lot of cushion and they just weren't able to create those kind of uh, little collisions. And you've got to want to make those receivers look over their shoulder. And they have not at least to this point. Huge win for the Mets tonight. 
They sweep that two-game series, something they had to do. Klingler throws to Alexander, bobbles the ball, gets inside the 30, gang tackled at the 29. Walker again in on the stop. Baltimore put uh, Toronto in a bad spot there with that 5-3 win. You know, this is like backyard football moved into the stadium. I mean, it really is. I mean, you got guys moving all over the place. It looks the same every play, but they are really perfecting an offensive style, and they really had Texas Tech just looking and hunting sometimes for where the ball's going. Second and a yard. Clock running, 7.35 left. Comes the blitz again. Klingler throws to Good. Nice move to get an extra six yards, and he's down to the 19-yard line. Ferguson makes the tackle. He got away from Dubisky. Klingler saw the blitz. They had all the men in the front line. They're going to rush. He finds the receiver very quickly. Now, make a tackle, Dubisky, number 23. That's what those receivers have done all night long, to be able to use their ability to break and make something else happen after the catch. They've done that all night. Another blitz. Texas Tech just going all out. The pass intended for Williams. He was horse collared as he went down for it. One thing we haven't talked about tonight, you would think as much as they throw, this is a high-risk offense, but it is not. No, they don't really consider it high-risk at all. That's one of the... the uh, really aspects that so many people have kind of a misconception of. They just really throw ball control. And, you know, has he had an interception tonight? No. No, no interception. And they've thrown the ball a, a lot of times tonight. 7.06 to go in the game. Houston leading by 20, bidding for more. Weatherspoon. Wingo had a shot at him, couldn't get him. Boy, Texas Tech is number one on the hit parade here in the fourth quarter. They are really doling out some shots. That was Kenneth Banks, number 96, who put Weatherspoon down. You don't know whether it's poor tackling on Texas Tech's part or just superior play and running ability of Houston, but they seemingly have, Texas Tech has missed a lot of tackles tonight. Third and seven. Blitz, man covered. Got rid of it, but couldn't find Brown. Verlin Brown was wide open going over the middle. Klingler just didn't have the time as Wingo was coming. What's the offensive line? Protect the quarterback. Witherspoon picks up someone. Klingler still finds the open receiver. The secondary was manned. They busted, but he couldn't get the ball to Brown. Anderson will go for a 33-yard field goal this time. He's hit from 26 and 40 and add 33 to his stats. Anderson's field goal makes it Houston 44, Texas Tech 21. Along the edge of San Francisco Bay, just off the Embarcadero, you'll discover the Fog City Diner. Elegant as a formal dining car, yet friendly as a Main Street cafe, where people reserve weeks in advance to taste the red curry mussel stew or the grilled chicken with roasted peppers. So leave your troubles behind, but bring your Visa card, because at Fog City, they take things easy, but they don't take American Express. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. The bigger than ever, better than ever. 23 to go in the game. And Houston to kick off. And the Cougars have served notice here tonight that uh, even though Andre Ware is gone, the run and shoot is still here, and they got some folks to run it. And John Jenkins talking to his quarterback. Klingler, who's had an outstanding night. Blackshear and Allen are back to receive. Blackshear had the big kickoff return last time. They'll say keep it in the end zone, five yards deep. This is the first Southwest Conference game of the year, of course. And the Southwest Conference, uh, one of the conferences, really scrambling to stay strong. And uh, they're, of course, going to lose Arkansas. And there's all this shuffling going on right now. 
Uh, very difficult times uh, for Texas football right now. Well, what's happened, uh, and I think that really kind of slowed down the momentum that was created with Penn State going to the Big Ten and Arkansas leaving and defecting to uh, the SEC, the Southwest Conference is really going to take a little bit of time to make decisions, and that's because Texas and Texas A&M is going to give the conference a chance to make some adjustments. Gill trying to go long for Hill, can't get him. There, of course, has been uh, plenty of speculation concerning the future of the conference, and we asked Spike Dykes about that. I don't get a lot of joy out of thinking about going to the East Coast or the West Coast to play football games that are conference football games, and uh, certainly we're not talking about us as much as we are other schools, and, and you'd hate to see it break up because it has been fun. It's been traditional for a lot of people, and uh, it's something that hopefully will stay intact. Arkansas will be eligible for the conference championship this year. Gill throws to Blackshear across the 25 to the 27 yard line brought down by Kenny Perry. Spike says uh, he doesn't like the idea that Arkansas should be prevented from competing for the championship. He says, if the kids didn't vote, it wasn't up to them. If they can win the title on the field, they ought to be allowed to keep it. And I like that attitude. I like most of his attitudes. He's a good man. Third and two. Toss it back to Marshall. Marshall with great speed. Knocked out of bounds shy of midfield. Yeah, first down, Jerry Parks took him out. Marshall does not look that fast. He's a great gliding runner. Donald Marshall, he won the 100 and the 200 meter 5A championship in the state of Texas, which is something big. But he does have that speed. Like you said, he's a bigger strider, a taller player. But hasn't been able to just get out there and use his speed the way uh, the coaches certainly want to see him use it. First down for the Red Raiders, five-man rush. Gill under pressure, hung in there long enough to get rid of it, but can't complete it to Richard Ross. He was covered by Tyrone Davis. Bevel was putting on the pressure. Bevel's had a pretty good ball game. 6'2", 245-pound junior. Not really big for a defensive lineman, but he's made his presence known. Sometimes when you list those uh, weights, he looks a little bit bigger than 245, too, doesn't he? He is bigger than Steve Forty. Gill wants it all on this one. And Hill had his head turned to the inside, turned to the outside, and it looked like it went right between his hands. Davis on the covers again. He looked like a pretty good throw. Jamie Gill a lot tonight has been really with the pressure in the second half. Boy, that, you got to catch that ball. And right in front of him, right where the hands are supposed to connect with the football. If your, quarter, if your quarterback's standing in there taking a pounding, you need to catch that one. And Gill on the run throws incomplete, trying to get Mannyweather. Like we said earlier, Jamie Gill has had a lot of pressure in the second half. The offensive line has struggled. They've not been able to make the blocks out of the backfield as effectively as they did in the first half. And he has had to throw off balance in the back of the heels, sometimes just with his arm, and he's just not been productive in the second half. Last three years, Houston has racked up 114 points against Texas Tech. This is the highest total tonight. They have 44, and they will go for it on fourth and 10. Why not? Five-man rush. Burnett coming hard again. Wide open. First down. Good throw by Gill. And a good catch down there by Richard Ross. It was an outstanding throw considering that Reggie Burnett, number 88, was right there close to him. There's Burnett again. He, when he has blitzed, he has taken a direct shot towards the quarterback, and that's put a lot of pressure. Good throw, good catch. Excuse me, that was Naughton, 95, not Ross, 85. And here is the sack as Gill goes down. Didn't have a chance. Trey Hooper out of Mineral Wells came clean. Clock running with 4.49 to go. Another 
another blitz. Gill throwing off balance and had Hill, but couldn't hit him at the 25. Gill must feel like they're taking target practice. Well, they played very well against Ohio State. They were in the ball game all the way through, and sometimes you get a false sense of security about your ability as a football team and what Houston has done. They've exposed that the offensive line has some holes to fill. They don't have depth in the back positions and they've not been able to throw the ball consistently. So the weaknesses have been revealed for Texas Tech tonight. Gill again airing it out intended for Ross and a penalty flag down. Interference will be called on Davis. Davis never turned his head and got tied up with Hill. take a glance and know where the football, your single coverage, know where the football is. He never had a chance. He was all over the receiver. And if he had looked at the ball, he would have known that it was not a catchable pass. He just backed off and it wouldn't have been a penalty. Sports Center following our telecast as they march off the uh, penalty down to the 34 yard line. Bob Lee and Dan Patrick standing by. They'll update you on everything. Of course, it does not get easier for Texas Tech. They have a brutal schedule this year, including Miami coming in here. Gill throws to Hill. Gets out of bounds at the 22-yard line to stop the clock with 4.19 to go. Remember, they started at Columbus, and then they play Houston here, then at New Mexico, Baylor, a team that's always given them a lot of trouble, then Texas and Arkansas, back-to-back -back road games. Then they play, I mean, Texas A&M and Arkansas back-to-back -back road games. Then at Rice. Then Miami comes in here. Then you play Texas, TCU, and SMU. And as Spike Dyke said uh, earlier this week when we met with him, this is an athletic director schedule. This is not a coach's schedule. But it's good for the program to play some big-time teams. Complete over the middle. Nice throw and a nice catch. Byron Hooper. And he's inside the 10. It will be first and goal. Preston Bailey makes the tackle. As we've said several times, Houston has given a lot of cushion. This pattern across the middle has been open. Some of the deep routes have been open tonight. I mean, they're giving them a lot of cushion. It's just been the inability to consistently, in down and distance situations, complete the pass when they had to. That's been the problem. Not a good play by Parks there as he went for the big hit and not the tackle. Lynn can't get outside. And coming up from the corner was Davis again to bring him down after a gain of a yard. Clock turning with 3.50 to go. Timeout, Texas Tech. Now we have a timeout on the field. 3.50 to go. Houston leading Texas Tech in Lubbock. 44-21. The game from each team. And right now, only 3.50 to go till the end of this game. Houston leading Texas Tech. 44 to 21, and there are some nights in your life when even a mask and a good red silk shirt aren't enough. This is one of them. Second and goal. Gill floats it in the end zone. Out of bounds. Manny Weather thought he had it, but the official right there and made the call. Looked like he came down on the line. Manny Weathers made some key catches tonight. I think he comes right down on the line. Sure did. Sure does. Good call by the official, and it's third and goal. Gill rifles this one in. Couldn't fit it in. Intended for his fullback, Shane Sears. And it will be fourth and goal. Some defensive stats for you tonight. Blount, 16 tackles for Houston. 16. Burnett has nine and is credited with two and a half quarterback sacks. Those are pretty good numbers for those outside linebackers. These kids can play. Fourth and goal. Blitz, 
Gill in trouble, unloads. Blackshear, touchdown. short side. Dives. Got it. Great effort by Lynn who gets in for the two-point conversion. And they've cut the lead to 15 with 3.34 to go in the game. Jamie Gill has really been bounced around in the second half. He's throwing, twisting around, just throws the ball up. And fortunately, almost Blackshear almost dropped it, but it was away from the defender and it gave him an opportunity, Blackshear, to go up and find the ball. Again, pressure. He's had it all in the second half. He really throws almost with his back to the receiver. Blackshear makes an excellent catch. I just wonder if Jamie's thinking about after this ball's thrown, if it's not elation or a relief. Probably a little bit of both. Blackshear gets the touchdown. And it's 44-29. Well, they went for two to cut the lead to 15. If by some miracle of onside kicks they get the ball back, they can go for two point, two two-point conversions and win by one. That would be some finish. But they'll need to get the first one here. The last time they tried this, the Texas Tech kickoff team overran it, and Houston recovered. This time, Burnett got up there to make the grab. He's done just about everything tonight. College football Saturday continues on ESPN with two games this weekend. At 12.30 Saturday, the Ivy League, Penn against Dartmouth. That's a 12.30 start. Then at 7.30, number 19, Michigan State will visit Syracuse. So Houston will start at the Texas Tech 45 with 3.34 to go in the game. Klingler leads them out. We've had 91 passes in this game and are approaching the four-hour mark. Hope you had an extra six-pack of your favorite beverage, but they <laughs> needed it tonight. And Klingler is going to extend the time. Yes, he will. Takes a timeout, having trouble communicating with some of his receivers who look a little unsure of themselves. 3.34 to go in the game. Houston, 44. Texas Tech, 29. Oh, oh. To go in the ball game. There is David Klingler. 396 yards passing, 25 of 48. Four touchdowns tonight. As opposed... Oh, that's really cute. Yeah, well, look, two games, 822 yards. <laughs> you, in an entire season, had 601 yards passed. A whole year. You guys had to really reach to get that stat. <laughs> but, you know, we had Of course, two, you rushed for a heck of a lot more now. Had, I'll give you We that. had two All-American receivers at Oklahoma, though. And I tell you what, people ought to either go play at a wishbone school or run and shoot because if you're at a wishbone school, every picture in the paper on Sunday morning is your receiver catching the ball up high, <laughs> down low. I mean, I made it two All-American receivers. <laughs> you were a walking bad ball drill, right? Oh, yeah, I was the bad ball. Klingler on the run and tends it for Sherman Smith and incomplete at the 41-yard line. Of course, we already showed you the... Uh, grim Texas Tech schedule. Here's what Houston has to look forward to. They go uh, against Rice, then at Baylor, Texas A&M, SMU, and Arkansas, all those conference games. They play two more conference games in a row. Then Eastern Washington, and then they are not eligible for a bowl this year, but uh, they're looking at their visit to Tokyo against Arizona State on December 1st as their bowl game in 1990. And John Jenkins really has a system down here. He's worked on it for a long time. Here comes the blitz. Jenkins unloads. Grant on the screen. Fell down. 
Boy had blockers out in front of him. Mike Geisler, number 67, was downfield just looking for somebody to run over. The luxury of this offense, Klingler knows very quickly that it's going to be a blitz. He knows he's going to turn around. The screen is set. I mean, great footwork and ability to just turn around. He knows the blitz and the pressure is coming to him. He's going to make a quick throw. That's the nature of this offense. He can read, recognize coverages, pre-snap by alignment. Then at the snap, he sees the pressure, sets up, knows he's going to throw, and he does it. I'll tell you, that could have easily gone for a touchdown. Three-man rush this time, delayed a weather spoon, and they were waiting for him. Let the ball go, but he was down at the 40-yard line. Weatherspoon tends to let the ball loose as soon as he goes to the ground, which is maybe a dangerous habit, and Matt Wingo was waiting for him on that. Managing a smile here at Texas Tech. Their club down 44 to 29, working toward two minutes left. Fourth and four. I don't understand this one very much. They're going to go for it on fourth and four. Weatherspoon flags are down. So is Weatherspoon. He did not get the first down. Sort of a strange call there. Yeah, it really is. He ought to punt the ball. Yeah. You know, that's a circumstance where, you know, people are trying to avoid the criticism because the offense... You know, fundamental football says you punt it, give them poor field position. The game's not in question. Um, sometimes what they say is not what they do. Yeah. And it was the Texas Tech defense offside, so that gives Houston a first down that at 34. It. They knew they were going to get a penalty. Sure. <laughs> I mean, this is, he's also coaching against one of his great friends, too. Another blitz. Throws over the middle to Good. Boy, he has paid for the sparse yardage he has gotten tonight. Good has caught a lot of passes, but not for many yards. Ferguson and Brooks unloaded on him. And Good's only 5'8", 170. He's taking a lot of abuse tonight. Clock continues to run. 120 left. And even with all the blitzes and everything, there has not been an interception tonight out of the run and shoot. Klingler again over the middle. Sherman Smith couldn't hold it. Almost picked off by Dubisky. Couldn't get the hands up in time. Nineteen seventy-three Baylor. 1,023 yards. That's total offense for both teams. Tonight it's 939. Klingler, 409 yards, four touchdowns. He's not done yet either. Completed the sideline to the 17-yard line. That will be good enough for another first down. And that's Craig Alexander out of Jacksonville, Texas. Well, the defensive backs are going to get a good night's sleep tonight, aren't they? They've got to be exhausted. They've been running all over the field tonight. They've been stretched horizontally, vertically. And this is the Houston offense. You throw it on almost every down, regardless of the situation. Brown, touchdown. I don't know. I think we have to go back to that uh, fourth and four where they did not punt, but chose to go for it on fourth down. And I don't know if I was a Texas Tech fan, if I'd be real happy about that. Well, I really agree with you, Mike. I, I just think that the fourth and four, you should have punted the ball. They're running their offense and putting more points on the board of a game that's very much decided. And now you have reached the point at 40 seconds where you could actually just kneel down and kill the clock. And there are going to be people who are going to criticize Houston for doing what it did tonight, and I think they'd be very justified in that. 51 points tonight, the most Houston has ever scored against Texas Tech. And they lead 51 to 29. Of course, they averaged more than that last season. It was the second most points on average in NCAA history. 
Only the great Army teams in the last 40 uh, or the late 40s were able to beat that. Well, I, I think, too, that John Jenkins is, is on somewhat of a mission of, of really creating credibility of this attack. You know, we talked about it earlier. I mean, he really wants people to be a believer in this attack. And when he says that it can go against any kind of defense, he is very firm about that kind of commitment. Oh, I understand that. And I think he has done a great job with not only the concept, but uh, the implementation of it. But I think there is a point uh, where you just call off the dogs, and I don't think he did. Yeah, and Cleveland's played the whole game. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you got your number one quarterback. NFL game day comes your way this Sunday at noon Eastern. Chris Berman, Tom Jackson, Pete Axtell, and Joe Theismann will be there to provoke the, uh, provide the most comprehensive pregame show in pro football. Getting a little tired. Then at 7 o'clock, they're back with NFL primetime. Highlights of all the day's games. And maybe even this one. Klingler, 435 yards passing, five touchdowns. Jenkins said, if you can get the right athletes in this system, in the right circumstances, a thousand yards of offense and a hundred points would not be unusual. That's a little scary. Blackshear and Allen await the kickoff. Blackshear from the five. Got another seam. The kicker didn't get him this time, but slowed him down enough so that he got help as he crossed the 50. And now for tonight's Visa Players of the Game from Houston, David Klingler. And from Texas Tech, Anthony Lynn. As part of their continuing effort to further develop the development of amateur athletics, Visa is proud to donate $1,000 to each of these universities and $1,000 to the U.S. Olympic team on behalf of these athletes. 30 seconds left to go in the game. This pass is incomplete. We have a new quarterback in the ballgame, somebody that we did not even have listed. Robert Hall, who we had listed as number 12, wearing number one. Freshman out of Dallas, an outstanding talent, and he is a true freshman. The young man they had uh, hoped to redshirt. Excuse me, he is a redshirt freshman. Led his team to the state 5A title in 88. Very quick. Throws over the middle to Hill, and Hill is inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. Temporarily stops the clock with 16 seconds left. Gain of 18. Hall was a walk-on. He had some offers from other schools, not in the Southwest Conference. Turned them down. Want a chance to play football in the uh, Southwest. Hall this time to Blackshear inside the 20 to the 15. Still on his feet. Got to the 13-yard line. One second on the clock, and they stop it there. They'll move the chains. The clock will start immediately after they do that, but now Texas Tech will stop the clock with a timeout with one second left to go. We'll be back in a moment. Well, if you're hungry for the pizza, come on and live it up at Pizza Inn. It's the place to live it up, made fresh from scratch. Give it up. Pass of the night. Call on the rollout. They've thrown it 100 times, and it's a touchdown. Caught by Chris Naughton. Well, that's the way for Texas Tech to end it. Good for Robert Hall. Great feet and ability. Young freshman, played in a great program in high school. Makes a good throw, a live arm. The touchdown. Nice catch by Naughton as he took the big hit from Zach Chapman. And they'll go for two. Hall on the option. Pitches it back. Loose. Houston's got it. The point after fails. Mike Kinney couldn't handle the pitch. And mercifully, that's it. Once again, our final score, Houston 51, Texas Tech 35.
ESPN's presentation of college football continues on Saturday with two games at 12.30, Penn against...